Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the AEL High School Cup. My name is Whoopshoe. Join alongside of me for today's action is going to be my good friend, Gex. Gex, you did not have the honor and the privilege of being with us here last week. This is going to be officially week number two here in the Mayhem tournaments. But I'm just kind of curious of what uh, your expectations are going to be leading into today. Yeah, I guess the honor and privilege stolen away by uh, all the rest of our lovely casters so far. But it is good to be back on expectations. I don't know. I uh, I got to say, first time in for the season. I don't really have a lot uh, behind me. I, I'm expecting to see probably some of the players I'm used to from previous seasons coming in, though. Um, and yeah, straight off the bat, we've got a couple of great schools uh, coming in, including our first place team in uh, in this group so i'm pretty pretty uh keen to see how they go yeah i mean i had the honor and privilege like i said of looking at all these teams the majority of them i should say we're gonna be played here on stream as well as the team that's gonna be headed up next that's gonna be kendron and spcc light and tangy but before we hop into that matchup real quick we want to show you guys as to how we got here so take a look at this quick video of the tournament format staged as the premier Australian high school esports competition. Here, you'll find more to play for, not just more to play in. The tournament series takes part in five phases. The Mayhem Tournament, Divisional League Play, Divisional Finals, State Finals, and then finally, National Finals. The Mayhem Tournament is a single day tournament that includes every Australian high school team. The field will play in a Swiss format where competitors will filter towards others of similar skill level. In essence, winners will play the winners, losers will play losers. At the end of the day, we'll crown a Mayhem Champion. The Mayhem Tournament also gives us a good gauge of everyone's skill level, leading into the next stage, the Divisional League play. Here, we see all competitors split into skilled divisions tightening the competition and making matches as competitive and rewarding as possible. At the end of league play, each division will host a playoffs featuring the top teams crowning a champion within each division. And it doesn't stop there. With the results from all divisions, we'll find the best teams from each state and invite them to the state finals. Here, competitors will contend for the title of state champions who will then advance to our final phase, the national finals. After the dust settles, only our state champions will remain for one final contest, representing not only their state, but also their school in a battle to stake their claim as the national high school champions. Who will it be? For all we know, it could be you. To find out more, go to ael.org.au slash hs. So there we go. There we have it. That is how that's the tournament format. And, uh, you know, I'm very, very excited about this format here, Gex. You know, we have the Mayhem tournament, obviously the 13th. That was, uh, I believe last week. And then the Divisional League play is now going to be live in the action. Of course, coming up after that is the Divisional Finals, August 12th through the 19th. The State Finals, the 26th through September 2nd. And then, of course, National Finals rounding out and on September 9th. But that was a great job by our good friend Max Formal once again with the, uh, you know, with the commentary over that lovely, lovely video as well. But the mm. Gex, we have to talk about, you know, the people that made this dream possible here for a lot of these high school students. That's our sponsors. And uh, I'm going to mm. pass the mic over to you so you can talk about these lovely sponsors. Yeah, even our lovely video does there couldn't be made possible without these guys. Let's start them off with our first one here. It's Acer Australia, the presenting partner of the High School Summer Series who provide PC technology solutions for all schooling needs in the classroom and at home and then followed up with a great well it's a monitor isn't it predator gaming the gaming pc partner sorry who provide high-end gaming focused pc solutions in both laptop and desktop formats powered by intel there's our monitors it's aoc coming in as the there gaming monitor partner who provide best in-class monitor solutions for gaming and all other needs and then if you want to, you know, back it up with some food there, Indomie, the noodle partner. This one always gets me a little bit excited. I'm, I'm so hungry. Made, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> made with high quality flour and selected ingredients. <clears throat> 
and spices. A plate of Indomie Goreng will certainly brighten up your day. Try any one of the flavours available today from your local grocer or at indomie.com.au. And finally, but definitely not last, Game on Cancer, the charity of choice for the AEL who fund much-needed cancer research projects project with the AEL donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life-saving cause. If you'd like to donate as well, please head to the AEL's Tiltify campaign page. So a great charity there coming in and helping uh, just about everybody really who hasn't been touched by cancer at some point in their life. Exactly. Uh, good job on those sponsors there, Gex. But let's hop over to today's lineup and show you guys the Rocket League action that we're going to have for you today. Obviously, rounding out the first place spot, the number one matchup on our list today, the first game, I should say, is number five, SPCC Light and Tangy taking on Kendron, who is number one. And like I said beforehand, I got the honor or privilege of seeing uh, the placements, essentially, of this uh, tournament. And Kendron is definitely one of those teams who are on my list of people to watch. They just absolutely dominated. I believe went undefeated as well last week and just uh, pretty much did not let up on the gas at all. Uh, coming in at that number two spot, we're going to have Kendron as well. Taking on, um, my apologies, I, I misread who the second spot was supposed to be. It was supposed to be Linwood SHS um, coming in, in for that game number two. Um, and then obviously the RVSB team taking on MGS as well. Um, that Raptors Blue Squad is a, a team I have circled as well. They didn't really show very good against uh, Kendron last week. I really feel like they have a lot more Rocket League to kind of mm. be played on the pitch out here against Kendron. So that's a team I'm kind of watching as well, Gex. I really, really want to see them out on the pitch and see them, you know, kind of bounce back from that poor performance. I, I say poor, but I really feel like they have a lot more to offer out here. Mm. I, I'm looking at the... Uh seedings right now as well uh, with SPCC light and tangy here uh, right now two to two in game as well uh, as they play around with this one Troby's gonna hit a nice one it's gonna be a really really uh, interesting one for them they are just sitting outside of that top four who would be heading through to their divisional uh, playoffs so they're gonna want to prove themselves pretty quickly yeah, I agree with you on that one. Speaking of which, let's hop into this head-to-head -head matchup, uh, this game number one here on the docket. Of course, we were talking about SPCC Light and Tangy with the starting roster of Doubtful, Flat J, and Tanker over on the Kendron State High School squad. We got Troby, Dev, and Levi, who, like I said beforehand, you just have to watch out because any single one of those people can pop off on that Kendron side. And of course, they're ranked number one here uh, mm. for the standings currently. Of course, anybody's beatable, though. I mean, SPCC can come out here and absolutely, you know, shock the world right now and kind of take a couple of games away from Kendron. And even in particular, uh, they might win the series, too. So we have to kind of keep our eyes out here and uh, not pretty much give credits to this SPCC team. Well, looking at how uh, hard they were going head-to-head -head, even in the uh, warm-up here, I think we've got a pretty good match on our hands. There's going to be some fight in this for sure. So uh, Kedron might be our number one seed, but I, I agree. I don't think that we're getting out of this one uh, with a clean sweep. Yeah, hopefully that's not going to be the case. Hopefully we might see an upset. I'm a big fan of the underdog story. I love to see a really, yeah. really good underdog team come through, just kind of... Uh, you know, shock the world essentially, but love talking about it, Gex. I really feel like a lot of these players out here are done. The, uh, I was going to say, I was going to say the test lobby should be up and running here pretty soon, but at the same time, I'm just really anxious to kind of be out here and kind of see this first game. Uh, what I saw last week, though, I, I did see a lot more SPCC Light and Tanga. They, they did have a lot more to offer. They just kind of started off on the wrong foot. And I really feel like a lot of teams coming into this week should just have a nice, cool, calm, collective, just breathe a sigh of relief. Kind of just let that last week go. It was the placements. It was the qualifiers. You, you have to not let that weigh on you come in here with a good mm. fresh mind just kind of learn from those mistakes essentially and then come into this one with just like everybody's zero and zero let's get going you know 
Yeah, I mean, we are still pretty fresh into this, and for a lot of the schools, this is, uh, A, quite meaningful to be able to pl play against the other schools uh, in the region. And uh, also for the kids, it might be their first time e ever playing competitively. It might be their first yeah. time on a stream. So you expect the nerves to be pretty high. So those those first uh, glimpse performances, it, it, you, you really can't take too much out of them, I suppose, as they get more used to playing within the competitive kind of marketplace here for players they're gonna be uh they're gonna be working themselves out as to as to those nerves and uh the mental state of of the game and i f feel like we talk about the mental state when we're when we're in rlcs and stuff like that all the time but you don't yeah. really know what that means until you're there experiencing it yeah and we talked about that quite a bit last week as well and you know you're used to seeing a couple of familiar faces here around the high school scene because mm -hmm. you've done this before in the past where this is my first rodeo i, I only have a, at least last week to kind of go off where you you kind of seen some of the same players you know whether it be either in this mayhem tournament or various other little high school tournaments as well or just you know bigger tournaments as well um seeing some of these familiar faces seeing people like shadow seeing people like you know levi seeing people like you know some people from the kendron squad that you know max was talking about last week who he is familiar with so those people are accustomed yep. to this high pressure situation this high pressure setting where you have some other teams like you said who are just not familiar with that familiar with having that pressure now that that last week is all said and done coming in here now maybe playing some more competitive rocket league and getting that monkey off their back as well hmm. uh yeah you're right there are a few names i expected to see back again here as well straight off the bat but um uh, i i think this is a bit of a different setting obviously we're coming in with a slightly different al high school series uh for the first time now as well um <clears throat> we've got those uh uh, lovely sponsors back in, of course, always supporting the uh, the high school scene. But uh, like I said, it's it's pretty important to these schools to to get that that backing of your uh, of your of your players there to represent correctly. And I think everybody's going to be pushing for their best performance today. And not only that, but we were talking about as well in the green room. Like this is the future. This is the future of OCE Rocket yeah. League. You know, a lot yeah. of these players. You could potentially see partnering partnering up whether it be you know the teams that we see out here on the pitch today or maybe you take a player from this team over here take a player from this team over here and you kind of you know combine teams to compete at that higher level because yeah. you know you like that person's play style whatever it may be this is a decent showcase i'm not gonna say like the best showcase but this is a decent showcase to show you know the future potential of yeah. the oce scene here and you know to kind of make those connections and and, and kind of scout i guess you could kind of say scout the uh the future talent and maybe start to form your own team to, to make a potential run against some you know big name teams or you know maybe compete against some uh, other people as well in the rlcs scene but enough of these stall tactics i'm just playing them gex let's hop into this game number one we have of course number five spcc light and tangy taking on number one kendron like you said these guys are the future and maybe not even just of the region but of the game entirely with the amount of international transfers we're seeing this could be even the future of na if we're hopeful death is gonna kick it off yeah death with a good put back as well the early pressure from the kickoff we've seen this time and time again it just kickoff strategy is just so important in rocket league and that's just the exclamation point behind it kendron's gonna start this one off in front troby a kickoff goal again here is going to look very good for Kedron. Troby and Def already stepping up in just the opening 10 seconds of this match. That was such a good speed flip as well from Troby. Almost, I would say, it's perfectly executed right there. Just, mm. you, you can tell. You're a Rocket League player as well, Gex. Like, when you hit that speed flip, flip perfectly, and you know you're going to be that much faster than the player, you just have to put that one on target, and that's exactly what Troby did right there in that situation to give them that 2-0 yeah. lead. And especially on kickoffs like that, if your opponent is getting those uh, speed flips. Oh, great little snipe from Levi as well. And this is heating up fast. Hedron is three to nothing. Yeah, unfortunate start right here for SPCC. Yeah, I was going to say that was, that was a physical play there on the goal mm. line as well. Um, we've seen a lot of that last week, especially with Kendron. But SPCC Light and Tangy, like I said, that's just one of those teams where I feel like there's a lot more Rocket League for them to have been, been played. But this is not the start that they want to have here in game number one. Oh, the passing play is starting up again. 
This uh, tournament heats up so quick, and uh, I feel like year by year, our high school students are showing us more and more and more. Uh, OC as a region is just heating up uh, as time goes on, and these kids kind of represent that. 100%. I love to see the future of OCE over here, like I said before. I want to see some of these players out there. Close shot from Troby. Not going to find its mark, though. Going to hit right off the top crossbar. And that's going to be, I believe, Levi. Maybe we're bringing that one up. I'm sorry, that was Ook. Bringing that one up over Ooh. towards it. But Rizza plays 2K. Going to score first here for SPCC and cuts that lead down to two. It's good work upfield from everybody there. Uke getting involved in the play, even though he didn't pick up that assist. That went over to Shadow. But uh, everybody playing that out quite well. And uh, now SPCC, Light and Tangy on the board. And it's only a two goal deficit. This is overcomable. Let's see if they can do it. Straight across net, already the pressure coming back on from Kedron. Yeah, and this is exactly what they do very well. They have that demolition strategy. They have the uh, the bump strategy. That they're, they're, they're very physical when it comes to the offensive side of the field, and they don't like to let up on a lot of plays. They like to start to suffocate and steal the boost from their opponents, and it starts to lead to something. As you see Troby, a double commit from the defense right there from SPCC, but it's going to keep them away just temporarily. I'm wondering if Yuka's just straight from ukulele. <laughs> Levi, another shot in. I, the, the players' names, particularly coming into the high school series, I've had so many questions about the names, where they come from, origins. Ukulele, I'm happy with that one. I mean, I, I thought it was maybe derived from Luke or something of that nature, <laughs> yeah, but ukulele true. makes a little bit more sense, but who knows? We all have weird names, I guess, online, and we all have an origin story when it comes to them as well. But up by three now Ooh, is Kendron. Here comes a shot from Depp. And that one finds the Great back of the touch. net. Levi, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's going to have some help from Shadow, who's going to force that one in. You're going to add another goal onto that lead. Had to go. Didn't see the uh, jump from Levi until it was just too late. Just getting to that was actually quite the effort. I thought maybe we'd see the uh, save come out, but Shadow couldn't do anything to stop that one reaching the back of net. Uh, Disappointing too, because that was that was quite an effort to get there. Still a lot of time left on the clock though, but this is a very, very tough Kendron squad. The SPCC is down by four goals to be exact. Cool. And like we said, it was, it was a rough start here for SPCC, but mm. there is signs of life, and especially when they start to break away and start to uh, actually have some sort of offense. They definitely have um, some, some signs of life. Oh, Riz actually tried to pre-jump that pass up from Shadow. There wasn't quite enough power on it to reach the player up high on that wall. Maybe a bit of an overcommit here does slow the rotation back, and through comes Troby. When all the players are still just on their way back to that defensive position, you get that shot on. It only has to be placed well, and it is by Troby. Yeah, I like the patience right there from Troby. That's something that we've seen last week as well, was just the sheer amount of patience that mm -hmm. Kendron had. A lot of people had as well. I want to shout out the Ripley Raptors as well. That second place team, I believe, um, in oh. the standings. But they had a lot of patience too. But look at Troby with the put back off the back wall. Levi's going to come up with the assist. And Gex, we have arrived in Brazil. We have indeed. Has Max Formal told you about his his little pet hatred of, of the Brazil number? <laughs> no, the, no, he has not. But I think band? we had a Brazil last week and he didn't say anything about it. Yeah, no, he won't say anything. He, he says oh. it's overdone. <laughs> it's it's outdated. I disagree. That's a Brazil 7-1. The funny number is on board and Max Formal can hate me all he wants. <laughs> <laughs> well, we quickly have a left Brazil of Max. If that makes you feel a little bit better, 8-1 now in favor of Kendron. Uh, still a lot of time on the clock as well, but this one's quickly getting out of hand as it was since the beginning of this kickoff. And uh, I want to defer over to, I guess, let's talk about some card designs here. I love Shadow's card design, the TY Octane. I believe he has the red crimson mainframe as well. Troby's going to score another goal. Going to be his fifth goal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely mental performance right now from Troby. These guys must be like just big fans of Max Formal. They've like been like, let's quick, quick, let's get as far from Brazil as we can go. They're, they're already on the plane. Let's uh, <laughs> head into a different continent <laughs> as we speak. Because uh, yeah, this has been dominant from Kedron. I, I can't, I can't pick exactly why it's this dominant. Yes, I think that uh, this should be a win for Kedron and solidly so. But SPCC Light and Tangy, they've been passing, they've been rotating. This is just. 
a dominant amount of power from a roster that you can see has been playing together for quite some time. Yeah, I think the biggest point is, is the fact that oh, uh, we're going to see a double touch from Troby. Just disgusting. As soon as he had that first touch, he beat the defense. I knew he had the second touch. That's a double hat trick right there from Troby as he scores his sixth goal in fashion. Mm. But if we want to point to something, I guess we could kind of point and lean over towards the fact that we haven't had much offensive pressure um, from SPCC. The, yeah. the, the one time that they did have that pressure, guess what? They scored a goal with it, and it was courtesy of Sha or Riza, my apologies. But at the same time, I mean, th there just really hasn't been too many chances for any sort of counterattacks because every time that you see Kendron with the ball, they score. Oh. Case yeah, just like that. Uh, it, it, it is. Kedron just converts so quickly. Possession turns into goals for these guys, and you can just about count down the possession uh, advantage here. 11 to 1 seems right. Not only that, but barely just, you know, breaking 252 score right there on top of the board is Riza, who has, like I said, the only goal here for SPCC. Handful of saves as well. This could be an opportunity right here for SPC to see to kind of get things going. You know, maybe head into that game number two, but we're going to see what happens if Kendron is going to allow that to happen or not. Droby at midfield. I'm going to try to field that one. Shadow with a good interception. Levi pops it over into the corner. Does have that second touch, making it hard to read, but a missed touch right there from depth is not going to have the advancement of field. There was a shot opportunity as well for SPCC, but that one was denied. It just comes down to the fact that there's not really any massive mistakes being made here from SPCC. They yeah. just have to do everything they're doing at such a much higher level to pose a threat to Kedron right now. We have seen that they are doing well uh, when they get the chance by that one goal. Like you said, it was the only time we've seen that upfield pressure and immediately they scored off it. So they, they have that capacity behind them. It is just this defensive side turning upfield, having the boost. I mean, they've been starved out and hungry for that boost for so long that this becomes quite the mission, just getting it out of their own half, let alone scoring. And there's Levi again to hammer home that point. 12 to 1 is just absolutely enormous for a scoreline out of a game one in our first series of the day. Yeah, I mean, you even had the case in point as well. Like I said beforehand, the, just the, the boost starving that's been going on mm. from Kendron, that whole entire offensive segment is just case in point because you see this the sheer amount of stuff that was happening on the pitch. You've seen them start to control the boost. Even the 12 pads, it was hard mm -hmm. for SPCC to uh, pick those ones up as well as this one's going to hit the ground. Kendron's going to easily win this one in a 12 to 1 fashion. But I mean, I think that that's uh, pretty much you know, nail on the head right there, Gax. It's just, there's just not enough offensive presence. Mm. And when there is offensive presence from Kendron, they just start to control that boost and suffocate that defense. I think uh, what we really need to see here is SPCC just gain some confidence. Uh, you're up against some pretty big dogs in the region. They probably were aware going into this exactly how dominant Kedron could be. And you can see the fear in their eyes. That they just have to step up to that. They've got to go, all right, we don't care who uh, you are. We don't care what you can do. We're going to get on that ball. We're going to chase it down, and we're going to make impacts on every single challenge we make. If SBCC can do that, they've still got a chance in this. I gotcha. I agree with you on that one as well. SPCC desperately need to wake up on the offensive half of the field. They need to start to control that midfield as well. But it's a tough ask, and like you said before, it's almost like they have to play above perfect Rocket League in order to compete with Kendron. So we're going to see if that can happen here in game number two as this one gets kicked off and underway. Uh, Kendron, just such a, like I said beforehand, dominant performance in that game number one, and they pick it up right where they left off. Here we go again, but up the back end. Now SPCC actually with a chance to get a lead here. Good early aggression there. I love to see that they are trying right off the bat to do what I was talking about, but then they let it go. Back way further than midfield. No challenge made. Levi left with time. Pushes through. And Yuke on the line just can't stop him. Yeah, I think Yuke had uh, so much trust into Riza there mm. that he just, you know, wasn't expecting Riza to mistouch that one. He was expecting him to hit it over into the corner. 
and it was just unfortunate that Riza actually missed the ball completely, so that left Ook in a bad situation. Even if he would have got a stop in that situation, I believe it would have been a dunk in favor of Kendron, but a good shot right there from Ook. Shadow puts that one back, and it'll be too far to the right-hand side. Riza tried to field that one, tried to maybe do something against Troby, but at the same time, there was some good advancement right there from Troby. Great chase from Rizzo here. They are putting that display on. They are making those challenges upfield. Shadow should be on this now, but it's left to Yuke again. And Yuke does make the save this time. A big shot upfield, and they're going to even up the game. One to one, SPCC are back in this. That's a good chance right here. Uke with a great advancement. And this comes off of just Kendron being ultra aggressive on the offensive end of the field, not respecting the offense that SPCC has to offer. And basically that leads to an open net because no one's home for Kendron on the defensive half. So a good fight right here from SPCC. Like I said, I believe there is a lot of Rocket League left on the field for them. They just need to play it smart. Levi, that's a big beat. This is talent coming through, but Yuke uh, is credited with that save. The backboard being used well there as well for the defense. That's three in the same corner, though. You don't want that from SPCC. A shadow comes through. They do get out of it unscathed and even get a shot on opportunity. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. A lot closer than that 12 to 1 scoreline in that game, number one. But Levi is going to go ahead and score and take the lead right back from Kendron or from SPCC. My apologies. A good shot from Levi, just an open net. And he almost missed it. It was, it was uh, a little bit too much power, in my personal opinion, but he's got a little bit of love from that top crossbar. This is so much closer than game one though i mean you can see the push back here from spcc either they're listening or they work it out for themselves but they have been so more there's just been more occupation on the ball here they've been dominant on field at times and that has kept kedron's lead way down in fact only a single goal separating the two teams right now and they continue to put on a good defensive display when it is up their end now I believe that they are listening. I think Troby was in chat earlier. I, I kind of glanced over and I could still see. Uh, he says that Kendra team seems pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, he, he was in chat earlier. I'm not too sure if they actually have it up. But uh, I have heard of players before, Ooh. like, you know, listening to the game itself mm, and, you yeah. know, like to hear what the casters have to say. And it, it sometimes does affect their mental as well as their gameplay. Well, especially because coming into the high school scene, you're, you're not particularly likely to have a coach, right? So getting yeah. that input uh, and particularly from people like you and I have been here a long time uh, this is a scene that we know hey, yo. fairly well and you can you can <laughs> read that out so yeah you're older than me I can't say Are that about many people on stream right now that is not <laughs> nice guys <laughs> no but I mean I do agree with you because there was a lot of people who like you said they don't have that coach so they don't have the professional opinion whereas mm. you and I you know we cast high level rocket league all the time mm. Yeah, so, I mean, we have some some good input, but people don't like to listen to us anyway. What's no. it really matter? It, what are we even casters. talking about? <laughs> I don't think the players or the Twitch chat ever like to listen to us. That's exactly. Admitting that we're correct would be some kind of sin. That's <laughs> it's, it's like admitting Twitch chat is correct, right? We don't do that <laughs> Yeah, either. no, never. Oh, man. It's a little, a little mini war out here. <laughs> minute and 30 oh, seconds left in this ball game. Oh, my goodness. That one was slowly rolling towards the back of the nets, but... SPCC going to keep that one out and still keep this game in their hands as well. But Levi has other plans. Going to score that one, put them up by two. And that uh, this game is particularly uh, a very, very important game. We haven't even talked about mm -hmm. that yet, but it's only a best of five. So if yeah. Kendron wins this, that's match point. Uh, SPCC was panicking then, still just trying to scramble back into rotation because of that bump from death there. Uh, death didn't just clear one, cleared one defender through another and just made sure that that was as difficult to save as possible. So everybody was scrambling back around to try and get on target. That's an amazing shot from wow. Yuke though. The redirect up field is going to keep this close again, back to a one point differential. Yeah, and guess what? It all starts from that far clear from SPCC catching the defense off guard from Kendron once again as they over pursue on the offensive end. Just wasn't expecting that beautiful, beautiful touch right there from Shadow. I believe that was. But Ook with the exclamation point, cutting that deficit down. Now, final 60 seconds. Here comes Def trying to maybe solidify 
this win here in game number two. Just missing the mark, though. Right back towards midfield is Levi. This is dangerous territory right here for Kendron. Good defense, though, from SPCC. Death now into that corner. Shadowed, avoids the bump, and gets one on Death to slow him down. Where's the challenge? Needed the second player up there. Got to get involved in these plays again. More and more pressure is needed out of SPCC just to break the possession from Kedron as they get it again. Death up early, driving it towards net. Great save by Shadow on the line, but it's still sitting right in front for the cherry picker, and it's Levi to get it. Yeah, that just lingered way too long on the goal line there of SPCC. Kendron always going to make you pay every single time, especially when you see more vertical plays being presented from Kendron than you do see from SPCC. But once again, like I said before, SPCC, just that team that's just on the cusp of just breaking through and just being a competitor here oh, in the Mayhem tournament. Yeah, I was going to say that was a close one. But at the same time, final seconds taken away. That one's not going to find its mark. Two to four or four to two in favor of Kendron here in game number two. Yeah, and that is quite the difference from 12 to 1. So Kedron, you know, a little bit of a step back from them, but I think they were held from it. SPCC made the challenge as well. They did have a lot more possession in that game. They still have confidence issues, uh, particularly if somebody is air dribbling towards them. They're hesitant to go up and make that challenge. They want to make it on the line. Don't do that. Make it earlier, especially if you've got two defenders available. If you've got that second man behind you, make the challenge easier. Even if you don't get to the ball, oftentimes you force it away from the attacker and it's an easier clear for your defender in that. Well, I want to say that Levi is walking away with four goals again. He has mm. four goals in game number Big one. Step up. Only person to score here for Kendron as well in game number two. And the only person to score for SPCC here was Ook. So, I mean, good mm. showing right there from SPCC. Ook walking away with two goals as well six saves as well but i mean we, we we know that stat line's a little bit skewed because there's a lot more defense being played right there for spcc um so six saves is great and all but we want to see more attempts on the offensive end for spcc oh here it comes away again just off post almost a kickoff goal there for spcc as the uh challenges become better so do the 50s on kickoff and that one nearly goes in their favor yeah, we talked oh about goodness. it time and time again how much the kickoff strategy is, and you've seen Riza almost with a double commit, yeah, uh, backwards redirect pass or something of that nature. But yeah, there was a double commitment there from Kendron. Can't capitalize on it though, as SPCC, but another double commitment right here. Kendron in good favor. Ook left by himself. Good save from Ook as well. Is that oh, one's going to find the backboard? Almost a good follow up touch as well from Kendron. I liked the confidence from Rizza there. I, they were still two defending. They were guaranteed to get a clear out there. If he could get that early touch, it might have set them up for a good chase up from those two who were starting to uh, leave the goal there as well. So it would have been a great opportunity to set up a quick counterattack, not just by one player, but the whole team. So I don't mind that effort, even if they did miss the opportunity. Still 0-0, zero to zero, which is... All you can really ask for in such a oh. close matchup. As I say that, I cast a curse. I'm so sorry. <laughs> SPCC <laughs> is going to score first here for Kendron. Uh, SPCC, uh, you're allowed to just be angry at whoops you here. This is this is all on it him. No, yep. no credit given to Kedron. It's all nope. whoops you. He's playing for the orange side right now. I really am. 100%. <laughs> that was just all me. I, I wanted to curse you guys. I just knew what was going to happen. And uh, I needed to help the boys out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think Kedron needs the help, to be honest. It says you, okay? I'm number one diehard Kedron <laughs> fan, okay? They need the help. And I'm going to do everything in my power to do Kedron so. You've got a Kedron shirt. Just uh, hanging uh, in the background. I'll, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to their contact and I'm going to expect some Kedron <laughs> merch in the mail. <laughs> the school oh. is uh, getting your contact information right now. Yep, email me, thank you. <laughs> oh, that touch goes backwards. Not no, sure I'm not what happened sure. in the midfield there. Yeah, Who's I'm not that? sure That's what happened. That Levi. was Levi. Yeah. I thought he was like DC or something, but I think he was just in utter shock as to what really happened. It was kind of seeing yeah. how it played out. 
Of all the players here, you don't want to go down. You've got Kedron, it is Levi as well. He made every single goal in the last game. So that actually would have been a win outright for SPCC without him. I mean, I would say so, but I, I, I firmly believe that Kendron can probably 2v3 in this situation. Uh, just because <gasps> you, you still have... You are biggest fan. I'm, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and just lay it out there. SPCC, I love you guys, man. Like I said, I think you guys have the, what it takes to you know be a good team here, but... If you look Ooh. back to game number one, I have I have receipts, Gex. I have receipts as Trophy, <laughs> the man I was about to talk about, Mr. Six Goals himself in game number one, scores a goal here for Kendron. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I do agree. I think Kedron has the capacity to take this with two players as well. But SPCC, as they continue to up their confidence, make their plays, make their challenges, we have seen the promise out of them. And like you said, they have the potential here to be a very, very strong roster. So it's about just getting time in this game, making sure that you've got the confidence on those challenges. And one thing that you're never going to see that uh, much out of the high school is the history on these players. Levi, again, hammers that one home and gets another one added to the tally for the series. He's been very, very big, particularly out of last game and looking to be so again. But that's one point per player. And SPCC, if they want to reach that potential, if they want to be at that level, they're going to have to put those hours in because Kedron has it. Well, two minutes remaining. Kedron starting to heat up just a tad bit. You're starting to see... SPCC backed up to their half of the field, and you start to see the uh, the offense of Kendron start to make their mark. But here comes Ook. It's gonna say he had himself two goals, trying to solo play that one, but a good takeaway at midfield right there from Troby, who's gonna go ahead. You see him go towards that top right hand corner. He steals that boost away, and that puts SPCC in such a predicament. SPCC still have not made an impact on this game number three and it is such a crucial one here as well we've already passed that halfway point in this series for a best of five and right now it's Kedron on the edge of taking a sweep here Uke on the line makes such a good effort but Troby is just too much in goal oh great touch yeah that was a solid touch right there I thought that one was actually gonna Gonna sneak its way by, but not really gonna find a smart Levi trying to fight against Troby there. Did have a solid touch. I think it might have been too high, but at the same time, we'll never know because that one was denied by his own teammate. But 50 seconds left here in game number three. Kendron winning this series two to zero. It's looking to hunt for this clean sweep essentially. As uh you know, they have the commanding lead here and in the final closing seconds, guys. Shadow uh, made a big touch to try and pass upfield there. Nobody available for it. I don't know if it was a boost issue, but uh, that's the kind of thing that SPCC should be going for. However, because they haven't been going for that for the majority of the series, you're less likely to find the connection on that pass. Nobody's going to be there for it. They're not waiting upfield because they're throwing everything at defense. The fear yeah. of Kedron is there. And with 10 seconds and no chance left here for the comeback, that fear is realized in numbers. Three to zero are those numbers. Yeah, finals zeros on the clock. That one's going to hit the ground. Kedron going to walk away with a perfect three to zero victory to start things off here for you and i gax and it was a good matchup i'm not gonna lie it was very very good for uh kendron but at the same time like i said you've seen what i'm talking about how spcc just is like on the cusp of being like a good team but at the same time they just they're just missing a few things here and there and this yeah. against kendron was such a tough ask so don't like i said don't let this kind of uh affect your mentality for the rest of yeah. this tournament this was a very very good showing come back watch this film study this film and then make the corrections later on down the road yeah like you said kedron's a big ask and i think for anybody right now that is why they are seated first in that group everybody in here they're coming out from queensland as well uh from the group so far we've also got uh linwood from wa uh, mrc saints from tasmania and toners from victoria waiting in that same standings there so uh we are looking at some other teams to come out to put the screws to Kedron, but our top two actually now, just as a result of having those games in, is going to be Kedron, followed by SPCC, so let's see who can slip in between. 
I think we have a couple matches being played off stream as well. So we're going to have some updated uh, stuff uh, standings for you guys later on um, in the stream. Uh, but I think the next matchup is going to be Kendron versus Linwood, which should be a pretty good matchup as well. But Kendron going to be that team that, you know, is fresh. They're warm. They just played a whole entire series on stream as well. So, I mean, I think they might have a little bit of favor, but we're going to talk about that a lot more when we come back from break. So don't go anywhere. We have a lot more Rocket League action for you guys. too far to say that we cannot pretend now was it never enough to have just everything you want in your shadow i found a place to hide me from my own thoughts and if i ever got lost to find the way to bring me
Fall over my heart. I black out the mood. I wait for you to come around. You got me dancing in the dark. I close my eyes, but I won't sleep tonight. Maybe you should come with me. I'll take you to the dark side. Me and you, you and me, do bad things in the night. Black heart, black keys, black diamonds, blacked out, black everything black. 
eternal state of mind Children of the night But it's the only way of life It's black holes pulling me inside Of this black heart, the black soul Underneath this black, black sky
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the AEL High School Cup. My name is Whoopshu. Join alongside of me for today's high school action in this Mayhem Tournament. Week number two is my good friend Gex, and we appreciate you guys so very, very much for sticking with us through that break. We were having some technical difficulties on our end, so... We knew it was a little bit longer of a delay, but I promise you guys, you guys did not miss much. You guys did miss, however, the oh, yes, SPCC <laughs> Light and Tanky game versus Kendron. Kendron winning that series 3-0. to zero. But Gax, that's in the past. We have a new game on our hands, but we still have Kendron, half of that team. Uh, mm -hmm. We have Kendron versus Linwood now. Yeah, Linwood, uh, I expect to be a fair big step up here. Matthew has been around for so long, and he's backed up by some great players there. Xavier uh, and uh, Sweat are uh, both. I mean, th this whole team is coming in here looking for a win, and uh, I don't think that anybody should underestimate them. Going head-to-head -head even in uh, just in our practices while we were having those tech issues. Uh, you and I jumped in there for a bit. Obviously, you with 200 and whatever it was. Ping was not going to have I a great experience the there. But I don't blame the I ping. I, I blame my they teammates. are fantastic. <laughs> All, every player on field was looking so good. So I'm waiting to see how they go when they are just head-to-head -head and really pushing with their all. Well, starting roster for Kendron, of course, is going to be Trophy, Def, and Levi. And then topping over to Linwood, we have Matthew, Big Xavier, and it says repeats, but I believe that might be sweats. Uh, hmm. Either or, uh, in the lobby, we're going to have some, you know, pretty much the, the, the better names. But you know how it goes, <laughs> you know, especially with high school kids, they change their names and Discord names and things of that nature. They don't like, you know, this name this week and they change it. But whatever it may be, we do have the starting roster for Linwood inside the lobby. So I think I do agree with you, though, Gex. I, we were hopping around. We were kind of, you know, ball chasing quite a bit, you and I. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, the, the players, the skill level just uh, increased significantly, in my personal opinion. But the lobby is ready. Game number one is on our hands. This is a best of five series. Who's going to win this matchup? Is it going to be Kendron or Linwood? Well, let's stop bullying our poor Observer as they do a fantastic job getting us into game here. And Levi is going to kick us off straight away. Xavier onto it, out to the midfield, and off the backboard it comes. Matthew with a big miss, though, and Troby will pick one up for free. Tell me this is how it's going to start off again. This is how it's going to start off again for Kendron. Another kickoff goal early on. This is reminiscent to the last series that they just played. How they started things off so hot, basically taking the lead within the first couple of seconds of the game. Mm. And I mean, they are coming in warmed up. They just came off the back of another series that they were dominant winners of the full sweep there. In fact, as Def now gets up, there is a lot on Kedron's back to be able to repeat performance here. I mean, yeah, it's still a lot of time left, too. I mean, not too crazy just yet. We don't have to oh, worry Matthew. about it, especially with shots like that from Matthew. Absolutely mental double touch right here and popping off solo. Well, now I'm just proud that he says we're here. We love Gex because that's that's the kind of plays that I want representing my name. Thank you, Matthew. That's, that's exactly <laughs> what I want to see. <laughs> that was such a ridiculous shot. The dunk, the double commitment there as well from Kendron, but at the same time, can't keep that one out. The equalizer does go in favor of Linwood. Levi on ground going to get a read into Xavier there as Troby. That's a downfield, a big bump on Matthew to get him out of goal. And it does free it up for Troby to send it home again. And another lead found for Kedron. That's a good shot, especially a better read right there from Troby. Like I said, mm, such a yep. very, very patient player. He knows when to let go of the gas. A lot of players will miss that shot just being too fast with that one wrapping around the corner. But Troby just perfectly positions himself. He knows the defense isn't there. He has all day to shoot that shot. And he makes them pay for it. Going up by one goal mm. now is Kendron. I mean, that, that kind of patience really comes uh, with maturity in Rocket League, I think. Like, as you get your skills and you're coming through and you're starting to feel good about yourself and you're, the shots you're taking, your mechanics, you tend to go for everything. But Troby has the more calm demeanor of a much more matured player in the scene, and you can tell that off of that patience. Like I said beforehand, still a lot of time. On the clock right there for Linwood to start to mount this comeback. They're doing just that as well. A lot better of an offensive showing and still backing up this defense of Kendron, forcing them to be respectful of the offense. They're going to have a little bit of a reset right here. 
Matthew does approach this oh, one. What a bomb. bomb play, though. Oh, my goodness. A well-designed and executed play right there for Linwood. Hard to read, too, because Xavier was realistically in position there to take that as a pass. Goes for the bump on Troby instead. And now we are all evened up because we can see Linwood has the brain behind them to back them up in this matchup. Yeah, that was such a well-designed play. I didn't even expect the bump play to come through. I thought it was just going to be a good shot on target, maybe saved mm, away, and the yeah. follow-up touch was going to be there. But, yeah, just the aggression right there from Linwood definitely... Uh, Kenwood have to approach this one with a little bit more respect than they had the last series. Death out mid for Levi. Does pick it up, and it's three in the corner. This could be deadly for Kedron. Matthew has the clear out, but it not, might not be fast enough to get that counterattack. Two minutes and 40 seconds left. Troby at midfield. Going to have to try to, I was going to say, try to have that second touch. He did go for a boost instead. That did leave Xavier with a little bit more room. You see the demolition strategy coming out now. Oh my goodness, a double demolition. That's Troby onto Matthew. But a missed opportunity right there for Kendron to take the lead. Oh my goodness, and Matthew respawns. Takes his time to get back to goal, but gets there just in time. Matthew waiting for this to pop out. There's that patience again coming this time from the opposite side of the field from Kadron as Sweat waits underneath. It's Troby on the backboard with good control, but does he have the boost to keep this safe? It's like it doesn't matter. Such a good offense. This is this is so yeah. like we're, we're biting nails right now, just in, in, in anticipation of something to happen with either one of these teams. Ooh. And I mean, anything can happen because it's two to two at this point in time. And this is as close as a matchup as we could possibly get especially just, you know, breaking things down analytically. Uh, you and I can kind of see things that are going on, like some of these passing plays, the, 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 yeah. the lanes that are getting shut off, uh, where there should oh, be Matthew. activated a shot. My what a save from Matthew as well. How did he read that one? Absolutely incredible. You see him go into the net so early waiting. He knew that the likelihood was they were going to try and take that high. He comes out of the corner. Top bin's shot saved away there. Absolutely crucial. It might just be a game saver from Matthew if they can score this next one still. 60 seconds is approaching. Xavier with a shot going high as Def. We're going to save that one away though. It's Levi who was low. That was a good chance right there for Linwood to take the lead but even better defense smart defense as well from Kendron towards midfield now all three members from Kendron pushed up Troby has a chance maybe going for a pinch off the side wall is going to be covered up by the defense of Linwood and taken away Depp with a chance now to bring this one upfield trying to go for the secondary touch but not enough boost to catch up with it you can see fear in Kedron's eyes now. They are being so much more cautious on this than the last series. And it's shutting down a lot of their opportunities. And don't get me wrong, I think they need this level of caution against Linwood, but they are struggling to break out of their own half at times now. Yeah. I know, 15 seconds. Looking at potential overtime here in game number one, which is what we love to see, especially when a game is this close, tooth and nail. Last chance right here for Kendron to get things done in regulation. Death off the back wall. Xavier with a perfect catch, though. Troby still going to keep that one alive. Here comes oh. Levi with the touch. That one was a close shot covered up by the defense. Still alive, though. Here comes Troby off the back wall. Or side wall, my apologies, trying to go for a passing play. But that one is going to be denied. And we do see overtime here in game number one, Gex. Overtime found... And might be put away early if Xavier has anything to say about it. Levi away. Now Matthew to come through and repeat that attack attempt. Troby out of boost will be left at the bottom of this. This is an onslaught of attack early here. And it is not Kedron's benefit. Linwood are coming up looking so good, but it gets away from them. Levi 50 to away. Such Whoa, double commit. a good series. That was a good double commit as well. This one could be an opportunity. There's the fake oh, troll because oh, it's too oh, hard oh, off the left side, though. He had that one dead to rights because the mind games were coming out for Kendron, but they can't capitalize on that mistake. Troby again underneath. Big bump on Troby by Matthew. The right choice as well. Keeps them in a much more comfortable position in their defense. Now Xavier pushes that out to the midfield. Def with a pickup. Troby now read right away by Matthew, who is coming up as MVP right now for Linwood has been all over this and a great challenge from sweat yeah so far 
only two people to score in this matchup is Troby and Matthew. So somebody else has to be activated, in my opinion, in order for them to push past either one of these teams. That was Xavier trying to score there in OT. Levi with the demolition onto Matthew. And I think Kendron should escape this defensive segment. But they still have to get this final touch. That's a good pressure being applied right there from Sweat. Troby, Great though, pass. passes that Ooh. one towards midfield. Can't connect with depth, though. I mean, that doesn't really give enough uh, credit to... Oh, my goodness. Ooh. I was going to say Levi, but it's Matthew that comes through with the goal for Linwood. A full carry there straight through all of the opponents and into the upper half of the net is so tough to stop. I honestly, on my screen, that one was saved. <laughs> That's why I was like freaking out. And then I, I saw the replay and yeah, 100% in. Just a great individual play right there from Matthew. And that's going to be his hat trick as well. He's going to walk mm. away with three goals. And on top of that, just a clutch situation to be in. To score that one in overtime, especially with an air dribble like that. Beautiful, beautiful performance right there. Game number one against Linwood and Kendra, uh, Kendron, my apologies. But mm. like I said beforehand, I thought that that one was saved away, Gax, because like on my screen, he like pinched it with the top crossbar and it popped out, but then just evaporated into a goal. So that's what it is. We were uh, talking up Troby there for the two shots, two, two goals, sorry, on Kedron's side. But Levi was sitting there quietly, MVPing for the team as, as we were talking about it, only overtaken uh, by Troby uh, moments after that. But Levi was sitting up there with five saves. If it had not been for that, they wouldn't have even gone to overtime. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Oh, Levi, Levi. there it is. I was going to say, he, he was the player to watch as well in that last series. He did have a, himself a couple of goals. Yeah. Um, remember, the only person who actually scored goals there in game number two for Kendron was Levi. He had four. So he has the offensive pop-off ability. But like you said, he paired that with defense last game. And sometimes you have to play a different role when you're facing against a tougher opponent. Sweat now to the corner. Levi will take this slow, not a ton of boost to spare to go for an air dribble, and Matthew slots it in again, right under the crossbar, and that was just dire situation for Kedron. Troby left on ground, demoed away, and it was guaranteed at that point. Just seems like whoever scores, it just doesn't matter. You know, this one's just so even, so neck and neck. Kedron, they scored first. Linwood just did such a good job at fighting back. And I believe for the most part in that game number one, Kendron had the lead and uh, Linwood just fought back. So it just, it just does not matter. No lead is safe at this point in time. No. I, I love how Matthew and Xavier in particular are coming up as a big duo here right now. They really are matching up well. If it's not one of them trying to clear goal for the attempt, it's the other. And always really making use of their positioning on field not just mechanically great but there it is again the opening created and matthew slots it home yeah just a good shot right there from matthew popped off in game number one had himself three goals that's a great cross mm. right there as well catching the defense off guard and uh, that's one thing i really noticed about kendron they do leave a lot of defensive opportunities for some teams to score against them and good teams like this one right here for linwood they're going to make you pay uh, for leaving that net open. Yeah. So, you know, well, Kendron... Uh, it, it wasn't originally. Levi was there, and he got led out of the goal uh, by Sweat, yeah. I think it was. So, again, it, was, it wasn't... It, it has to be forced still. I do agree. Kedron are leaving opportunities, but uh, Linwood are so good at forcing that to happen. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, but, the, but if you think back to that last series that we just watched again with, with them, they, they left a couple of opportunities oh, yeah. over there for SPCC for uh, for, for counterattacks, and SPCC made them pay for it. So, I mean, th there's a couple of opportunities that, that Kendron have on the offensive end, but I feel like they throw so much on the offensive end that when they face yeah. good teams like this, like Linwood, they're going to make them pay on the defensive half. So they really have to watch what they're doing as far as the rotations go. They know that they can link up. They know they've got the uh, opportunity when it comes to the mech. And the shots are always well placed, but... Troby there to the backboard. Do they have the defense this time? No, everybody's just respawning as Matthew. So that's another one. That's going to be the hat trick for Matthew again here for Linwood. Yeah, two back-to-back -back hat tricks. Just absolutely <laughs> insane. That's what it looks like I was trying to do to you over and uh, when you're trying to get the air dribble off. I was trying to steal that one away from you. That's what it looked like when we were doing the warm-up game. But uh, 
Yeah, just right over the top. But yeah, like you said, Matthew just popping off, and Kentron has to oh, have Matthew. an answer for him. Answer from Troby there on the backboard at least, but not in goals yet. Troby, past one. Does he have the support? The reset? Maybe. No, trying to get that pass off to Levi. No boost left on Troby. And Matthew has to lead away to the corner. Great save by Sweat. And a demo there from Levi. This is crucial opportunity. They have to take it. Levi turns and they do. Yeah, what a heads up play right here. Just a good passing play, keeping that pressure onto the defense. And you see right there in the back half, Linwood was just in shambles uh, for the rotation and just kept uh, Xavier was there. Matthew was there. They just could not respond because they, they could not get their cars under control. And just uh, that's what you have to do. You have to capitalize in those situations. Oh. But Matthew reading this one off of the ceiling, just pretty much taking that flame that was starting to ignite there for Kendron and just extinguishing it himself. I mean, Troby was trying to backboard defend that, wasn't expecting it to go directly to net there. And yeah, defender on ground, wasn't expecting that extra touch to take it over him either. So uh, a great play there. And yet again, it's Matthew to stand up for it. Starting to wonder if anybody else is going to score from this point on. I mean, who else needs to score? That's the question. Yeah. When you have a player like this on the team and he's, well, I mean, sometimes it's either Levi Def or Troby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, but what, sometimes, you know, as well as I do, especially watching some top team uh, tier teams, when a person is hot in a series, you mm. kind of just have to hand it off. It may yeah. not necessarily yep. be the best player on the team. I'm not trying to say Matthew's not, but I'm just saying sometimes that player yeah, is just playing peak off. right yep. there and you have oh, to give them, the, give them the, uh, give them the rock there and Troby going to try to take a little bit away from, uh, you know, this, this, you know, a high caliber offense and the, and the lead that Linwood had, but, uh, yeah, still a lot of time left on the clock. It was such a solid, solid shot right there from Troby. Yeah, top half again there and just slips in behind the defender's dive. And now, again, Kedron only one behind. There's Troby. Xavier's already up. Sweat the last one on defense and Matthew has to turn. This is chaos on the defense for Linwood and Matthew will reset to goal. This should alleviate some tension for now. Minute, 23 seconds. Lots of time left on this game. I was going to say, uh, I think somebody was trying to correct me. Kedron. Kedron. They're trying to correct me Not inside Ken, the chat Ken right Ken now. I think I, I think I was saying Kendron or something yeah. along those lines. Irregardless, whatever I was saying, you guys know who I'm talking about at this point in time. Okay, you're you're just leaving yourself seconds. open. There's no such word as irregardless. <laughs> I know! I know! I keep on saying irregardless in my vocabulary. I need to erase it. I don't know why I picked this up. I heard it from somebody, and I've been saying it for like two weeks. Gonna irrigate the ear on that one. Yeah. Matthew! Matthew, oh, oh my gosh. He was going for his fifth, and it would have been quite a spicy one. Yeah, he's just been having this backboard presence the whole entire time. Somebody needs to respond over on the Hedron side of the field. This is a good shot right there for Matthew as well. A little bit too wide to the right-hand side. But still, Matthew needs to be dealt with your Kedron. Oh, that's insane center. Levi wasn't ready for it either, though. No, I don't think anybody was expecting that to come across so fast. As Troby did make that pass. Still opportunities. Dying seconds. Levi has to make a good challenge, though. It is going to go up. Def has the boost to turn on it as well. Looking for Troby. Matthew spikes it down. Linwood take game two as well. That's such a solid performance right there from Linwood. And of course, off of the back of Matthew as well. Four mm. goals and a, you know, a handful of saves as well for the Linwood defense. But at the same time, there was just so much pressure from Linwood on the offensive end of the field. It's almost like a flip of the script right here for Kedron, yeah. um, who basically had, we, we were praising them for the offensive prowess that they had in this last series. And now that's almost non-existent because Linwood's defense is just that much better. Uh, one thing I think that's super impressive about the four goals from Matthew, normally you see a player go off like that. It's based off of just an insane amount of shots. All they're doing is aggression. Matthew was four for five shots there. The, the uh, conversion rate was enormous for Matthew. He only shot when he knew it was going in, and uh, the rest of the time he spent filling the rest of the field. Those points weren't only for, from the offensive side of things. He was just absolutely dominant on field. 
Well, think about, you said that he's four for five. Think about the one that he did miss. It was yep. the one off the backboard, the double touch. I mean, yeah. so it just goes to show you mechanically, you know, where he is. He was still going for that play, and had it just been a little bit more on the mark, he would have scored that one as well. But at the same time, like I said beforehand, if you're Kedron here, you have to have mm. a response. You need yep. to get the ball oh, away that from might him. Be this could be a good opening goal right here for Kedron. It is going to be opening goal. That's going to be courtesy of Death. Fantastic play, but a little bit of luck there. A big misplay from Linwood. Actually, two defenders bumping each other. I think they're out of net. The dive on the save not benefiting them there, and Kedron going up early. This could shift the momentum of this. I still don't think Linwood would be worrying too much right now, but when you aren't on the upper hand, you're less likely to go for the big risky shots they, until the last moments when you're really, really trying for just anything to save you. I mean, but at the same time, like I said before, in game two, there, no lead is safe when it comes nah. to this ball game. The, this game is so oh, close uh, out here on the pitch. But on top of that, on paper as well, you have to think Xavier hasn't been activated yet. Sweat hasn't been activated yeah. yet. It's just been sheer Matthews will and force that has been doing everything here for Linwood and keeping them in this game, especially on, on match point too. Sheer Matthews. Can you share a walrus? Not a wall, it's a narwhal, sorry. Death is on a Kedron <laughs> up by two. Yeah, that's the second goal as well. Good read. Um, you've seen Death. He was just being very, very patient. That goes, goes back to what we were saying earlier about the patience that Kedron has. Um, you know, thinking mm. over to Troby. But at the same time, you know, this is still uh, 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 three minutes, almost four minutes on the clock. There's still a lot of time left. Amazing push by uh, Def here as well. And we've seen Troby and Levi kind of swap being the MVP for Kedron uh, in both series so far. And now Def, when they, they really need it most, when they need to conquer that mental game again, it's Def coming through with uh, with the shot. And it really hasn't, you know, Def really hasn't been the, the person to look towards here on the offensive side for Kedron. Mm, yeah. You know, it really has been Troby. It really has been Levi. You know, the death has been, you oh, know. Oh my goodness, solid Levi. Solid third man, I was going to say. He was uh. been a solid third man. Now there's missed opportunities being out here for Linwood. Maybe they're taking it, it, it easier out here, Gex. They're on match point. They're, you know. They do seem to be. Yeah. I was going to say, it looks like relaxed. a little bit of a different team and a little bit of a different uh, change of pace here on the, on the pitch. But that's what I was talking about. With a lead on Kedron's side, I expected a bit of a gameplay change from Linwood. However, this is more of a swing than I was expecting. They are definitely being very reserved here. Troby goes down there and does mean that the offense will let up and not much. Levi is there looking again to get everybody involved. Troby off his own backboard for the defense. Sweat takes the shot. It's a triple commit. Oh my gosh. This should be good for Linwood, but it's a slow setup and they won't get it in time. Yeah, that was a huge, oh, huge missed opportunity out there for Kedron, or uh, for Linwood, my apologies. Kedron, like, like you said, they had that triple commit. All three members were committed to that defensive stop, and uh, it worked out for them in this particular situation. Usually you see a goal out of that situation, but now Troby, and I want to say, uh, Kedron is, they're, oh, they're playing so out. smart. They're, they're, they have slowed the game down a lot, and they're playing really, really smart and methodical right now. Yeah. This is what you needed to see out of Kadron, and they are finding contact with each other as well here, going in for those aggressive bump plays. They're finally starting to start up. I think it's been a bit of a slow burn to get that confidence back Ugh. off the back of death. Troby with yet another great save there. In underneath it, might be able to get this center, but it's blocked away by Xavier. Yeah, so far... Kedron has just been controlling the pace of play, controlling just everything as far as offensively, defensively, being very smart, methodical about a lot of Xavier? these touches. They really haven't had too many chances. I was going to say, uh, Linwood haven't really had too many chances on the offensive end just yet. And when they do have those chances, it's quickly taken away from them. Xavier running the field on defense right now. And... Matthew across to the center. Def is there. Matthew had a boost. Will turn after the 100 pick up and Sweat should be able to make good use of him only if Troby isn't there to shut both of them down. Xavier now running back for defense as Levi takes the shot, places it well, but Levi gets across the face of the goal in time. 
That's right now for Linwood to kind of do something here on the offensive end. You saw Matthew trying to put his situation, uh, put his team in the best situation possible. Just could not get that final touch to maybe put a threatening shot towards the net. No follow-up touch either that quickly dissolved for the offense, though. Matthew has another chance. Oh, he has a double touch. Goodness. Could have missed that one. Xavier, oh, Xavier with the put back. Good to rattle off the top and the side crossbar. Unfortunate right there for Linwood. That may indeed be the dagger. As you see, a backwards flip going right there for Sweat. Levi's going to save that one away. And the final 10 seconds are indeed on the clock. It looks like Hendron is, are going to stay alive here and uh, win their first game, Gex. Mm. Well, this Xavier is no professor at this point, but... It's not over yet. They're still out ahead in the series as Kedron gets their first win in here. It does mean they will avoid the sweep, but can they do it again? Can they come all the way back into this and make the reverse sweep? I mean, I, I don't know. It comes down to, once again, is uh, Kedron going to have that early opening goal to, you know, kind of get that ball rolling in their favor, get that confidence boost early on. That's what they really, really need to do. They, they've done that in the last series. They've done that in game number one. They pretty much were controlling the pace of play for a majority of the game, but that overtime really, really was detrimental, I really feel like, for the mentality of the offense because they came back in that game two and they just weren't looking like the same team. Now they're starting to you know, figure out the offense here of Linwood. If they shut down Matthew and take away a lot of opportunities from him, that results into a lot more goals for them. So, I mean, we're going to have to see what kind of team we face out here. Kedron definitely has the skill set. They have the three better players, I think, uh, as far as like, team chemistry goes. Um, but at the same time, you, you, you're going up against such a high caliber offense, which is Linwood. Yeah. Uh, I would agree with that. I think Kedron's team chemistry is matching up better, and Troby is there for that reason. We do have a tech pause for a moment called by Matthew. Looks like Xavier's ping. I did spot that in the lobby before we went in. I did too, yeah. Uh, yeah, flashing red there, so we've got some issues on the side there for Linwood. Yeah, I was going to say, towards the last uh, tail end of that game, I did see a little bit of ping issues for Xavier, but... I thought it was just one of those things where it was like towards the end of the game, it was just flashing. And then uh, basically, yeah, when we got into that game, he was on just constant red flashing ping. So we are going to have a new server getting up for you guys. But at the same time, can Linwood push past Kedron? I want to hear your perspective. They're doing a good job shutting Matthew down. Yes. But if Xavier and Sweat get involved in this offense for Linwood, is it going to be enough for Kedron to push past them? I don't think so. I, I honestly think they need Matthew right now. Yes, they are high quality players. I don't deny that at all. But if they are shutting down Matthew to the point that this becomes nearly a 2v3, which it did seem like it, no matter who was out of the play, it was a 2v3 all the way through that last match. It seemed like there was always one player missing from that, uh, that scenario for Kedron. Yeah. Linwood will win that 3v2. They absolutely will. You can't doubt Linwood that way. Yeah, on top of that, if you think back to the one chance I think that Xavier did have, remember he shot that one too high, it hit off the top crossbar, the side the side post as well. So it, it, he had an opportunity to get his name on the board here, other than Matthew, somebody getting a goal other than Matthew mm. here for Linwood, and it was just a, a mistake on his part by putting that one back just a tad bit too high. So I really feel like if Xavier and uh, Sweat get involved in the offense here, it's definitely going to be a different ball game. It's going to add a different element um, that Kedron probably is not going to be expecting. But at the same time, once those two start getting involved in the offensive play, are they going to start being more aggressive, which is going to lead to a couple more opportunities on the back end for Kedron to kind of capitalize on? Mm. Well, we are waiting for a uh, complete PC restart there to see if they can fix the ping issues. So we will be talking on for a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, Toners have come up as the winners of their match against, uh, I believe that's SPCC um, mm -hmm. again there. So Toners now taking that second position. Kedron still leading, but Linwood could change that here. I mean, this is my shock face. I mean, the Toners are such a good team. Um, that's one of the teams I'm very, very excited to, uh, to to watch on stream because I believe that's the next matchup that we're going to have on stream is going to be uh, the Ripley Raptors blue team taking on that the Toners team. And it's going to be a rematch as well, in my personal opinion, um, from last week where the Toners, I believe, won that matchup. I think it was three to two 
in favor of the toners or maybe even was even a sweep i think mm -hmm. the toners pulled off the sweep against the raptors i have to double check my notes um but at the same time the raptors are a, a very very solid team like i said beforehand those were just the qualifiers the placements to last play. week mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it was like i think it was the best of, i think they were best of threes even last week as well so best of fives are a tad bit different you have a little bit more time to kind of talk about it they have time to go back and look at the film as well from last week so i mean the toners are such a solid solid team spcc like i said they're that team that's on the cusp of just being a good Rocket League team to compete, maybe take a couple of games away from these high caliber teams like the Toners, like Kedron, um, you know, like Linwood. I want to see them win at least one or two games from them. Instead, um, they're just missing something either offensively or defensively. Well, we might have some bad news here because it looks like Xavier might be on a permanent 100 ping. No, here we go. It's starting to come Start down. To stabilize. But Fortunately, yeah. Uh, WA, you are going to face higher pings anyway, so 100 is probably not that far over uh, where you would normally be sitting for these servers. However, uh, they need to get rid of the red flashes and stuff like that, which has just come back again here. So uh, it looks like it will be on and off problems for Xavier throughout the rest of this series, which with how close this was, like you said, no lead seemed to be... Uh, insurmountable in this series so far it really does throw a wrench in the work the teams are too close to lose a player yeah. even if it's only losing half a player as it were in this situation i mean because you have to think even though they weren't really contributing too much on the offensive end and i'm talking about like xavier and uh and, and and sweat they weren't contributing too much on the offensive end they still are a crucial factor when it comes to the overall gameplay it comes to you know defense it comes to offense they, they still have a role to fill whether that be you know you, you being that second man that third man and matthew just being that first man whatever it may be you still have that role to fill and xavier mm. is a crucial crucial part to that like and i said beforehand he hit he, he had an opportunity to score in yeah. the game uh number three but at the same time he uh he missed it so these ping issues are definitely gonna be huge to kind of keep our eyes on yeah he is uh a crucial part of that that kind of uh, two-man play there from matthew and him and he has also just accepted his fate. So we are going through, we're going to continue playing. However, Xavier is going to be playing with 100 ping flashing red here. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be moving all over field on his screen, but he'll do what he can with it. Uh, a little correction to my statement earlier. Linwood actually cannot change the fact that Kedron are out in first place here. In fact, I don't think anybody can because Kedron were already first seeded and they want to sweep. It would have to be, at least two series would have to be uh, played out by both Kedron and any other team for them to take out Kedron from the top spot right now. So Linwood, this being the first one they've played since qualifiers, they actually can't touch Kedron here without another series that they would sweep because they've already lost one game to Kedron. Yeah, I was going to say Linwood does play next as well. Not on stream, they're going to be playing off stream. That's going to be Linwood versus uh, MRC Saints. So a pretty good game to keep our eyes on as well. That same game. They still got to win this one. Yeah, I mean, they still have to win this one as well. I, I totally agree with you on that mm -hmm. one. But uh, I was just saying, like, that's the next matchup for them. They do have another yeah. matchup after this one is what I'm saying. And I, I truly do believe that Kedron can come back in this match yeah. and uh, they, they can't pull off this reverse sweep. Especially if there's issues. Xavier's sitting on green right now, though. So we'll keep an eye on that if the issues start to impact gameplay. But... Matthew already on this and sweat with the chase. It, it's tough. Even if the issues go away, it, it can affect the way you play, knowing that they could come back at any moment so badly. I, I've had the same issues myself. If, if I've got some tech issues in game, even just playing ranked, I will play around those tech issues. And then when they go away, I will continue to play the same way. So if Xavier is going to adjust to his tech issues, it will mean that he is playing subpar to his own expectation, but he might continue to do so even after the issues go away. So let's fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. Yeah, it seems like he has been st he's stabilizing. He is uh, currently on 104. It's bouncing from 100 to 104. So, I mean, as long as he, like I said, fulfills that role that his team needs him to do, and he just does good enough. But he has the ball right here on offense, trying to just advance it past midfield. Can't really get the proper touch on it. Had a lot of people in his face. But as long as he fulfills that role, I really feel like it wouldn't impact right, the offense too much from Linwood. Oh my goodness! An absolute banger of a shot! 
off the start here. First one going away off Matthew. Troby got a little touch there, and Def wasn't expecting the extra speed and pops it back right corner himself at 114k an hour. Yeah, that was such a great shot, the air dribble as well. And like you said, what a huge contributing factor to that one was Troby was trying to challenge that one early, and he had the redirect. Matthew just pretty much trying now to add another one onto this lead. They smell blood at this point in time. That's a good shot right there from Troby. The put back from Levi, though, going to equalize this one. And once again, Gex, a short-lived lead here for either one of these teams. Oh, sweat. Just misreading that. Very badly there off that backboard, and that's an incredible uh, way to take back that goal because we weren't seeing Kedron make these mistakes. There, there was, uh, uh, sorry, we weren't seeing Linwood make these mistakes earlier. There was barely a mistake to be seen from them. Breaking them took demos, took uh, just anything to interrupt their rotations. That was left wide open, and the panic save wasn't found. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate situation to be in as well. It's such a tough ask to, to ask somebody to be in that situation as far as to save that one away because it's pretty much a guessing game at that point in time where the defense or where the offense is going to shoot that one. Mm. Here comes Troby now. Oh. Nice shot. The air dribble, ground the air dribble with the final touch over the last defender there. That is beautiful. Troby directly underneath it, pops it high, just keeps it in his nose and gets that little flick forward. That is absolutely perfect with the defender right in front of him. Got that little extra speed in the pop. And now we're seeing Kedron with some ping issues as well as Levi hits red. Yeah, I was going to point that out as well. Levi just started fluctuating as well. He's been sitting at about 30 to maybe 40, I think, as far as ping goes. And uh, currently right now, he's fluctuating between about 50 mm. to 70. He was flashing red a little bit ago as well. Almost about the same time Xavier is flashing too, so... Yeah, these uh, the, the ping issues are currently coming out right here for the OCE players. Yeah, interestingly, I mean they're, they're nowhere near each other. Queensland and uh, WA about as far as you're going to get. So I don't think the internet problems would be related, but you never know here oh, in OCE, man. do you? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say like I I think I told Max last week I was like I had no idea that Australia even had states. Like I thought you guys were just one big <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one big existing floating island in the uh, middle of the America ocean. that has a state per city, it feels like, from our perspective. I, I think we need a few. We're a pretty big landmass here. Listen, I'm going to go ahead and just do a state test of Australia. You do one of, of America. We're going to see who's closer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Try well, me. Under two minutes to go. It's still uh, in favor right now of Kedron, who's trying to mount this reverse sweep. Xavier with the second touch can't quite put it on target. Def's going to go ahead and clear that one up. Field Troby with the putback. Oh. That one should find its mark. It does. Matthew can't get the read off the back wall. Ah, yeah, just a bit of a rare occurrence that Matthew doesn't make the mark, but it is a tough reach, and the flip was really needed to get to it. He couldn't accelerate anywhere but outward from the net there and that kept him from the ball yeah unfortunate but at the same time if you're a Kedron fan that you are excited to see what they are doing out here on the pitch they're up by two goals short time remaining as well and they're starting to find answers for this offense that you've seen Linwood had great success in with game number one and game number two Matthew to the backboard. We'll look for the demo and Def. Def had to avoid it, but Levi is there with brilliant touch. A second one there actually coming out from the teammate as well to keep that going forward. Now Levi should be able to get a 50 here. Matthew wins it as it goes to corner. And now Xavier up has been uh, avoiding most of the ping issues at this point, but hasn't really been able to come into this the way that we have seen him out in game one and two. This is what I was hoping not to see, that Xavier just kind of affected permanently by the uh, issues he's had now. I mean, but speaking of issues, I want to point out Sweat only has 16 points at this point in time. I'm not too sure mm, yeah. what's been going on out here on the pitch for him and Linwood in general. Def trying to push that one back through. Going to be saved away by Matthew. A double save right there for the defense of Linwood. Final 30 seconds on the clock, though. Can they have this comeback? The defense from our, uh, the offense, I should say, for Kedron had just been putting so much pressure onto this limited defense. I think it's tough for Sweat. Oh, what a save from Xavier. Definitely not facing down those issues in defense at the very least. 
Matthew now, good chance, didn't get the reset, does have a little boost to spare, but will run out before he makes contact. And with the clock ticking down, you've got to expect that that is it. Kedron have come back in with so much more confidence here that you have to expect maybe that is the difference, particularly for Sweat, that they are just on the ball so much more often. They are pushing this now, and it is making the opportunities for challenges just dry up. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that I want to say it's not really the ping issues that's really happening out here for Linwood. Xavier is battling those ping issues, but at the same time, I really mm. feel like Kedron started to figure things out towards the tail end of yeah. that game number three, and they started to implement those changes towards the tail end of that game number three as well, where they ha where they actually had that comeback. Xavier is just letting this affect his mental. He needs to kind of, like, you know, just play within the certain situations. Like you said, Gex, you deal with the situation all the time, just kind of get through the game, and then hopefully the next server is a little bit better type situation for you. Um, but at the same time, Kedron was starting to gain that momentum and that speed and uh, starting to figure mm. out the offense of yep. Linwood. Well, Bassink, a little savior there, looking up the facts, and there are known connection issues all across Australia right now, so maybe it is related. Uh, it absolutely could be, after all. Uh, so we are seeing more green than red, uh, as mentioned as well, though, so I, I think that you're right. I think that this is more to do with Kedron picking up than is Linwood dipping off. We are still seeing Xavier in particular say that, you know, that this is tough to deal with for him. Yeah. But, and we saw that duo coming out from Matthew and Xavier. So I do expect that the offensive side from Linwood is going to suffer pretty massively here. But Sweat getting more involved in this could just pick up a little bit more of the slack. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with you, but... You know, this is one of those things that if you want to be a top tier team and be a top tier performer here in OCE, you have to kind of deal with these situations and you can't let it affect you. You can't let it affect your mental. You have to just kind of fight through the situation because there's nothing you can do yeah. in your power to kind of, you know, um, redo your internet, you know. Xavier. There's Xavier. Wow. Just pushing through the opponents. A great read of Levi there. The pre jump just about to read him <laughs> off the wall. There he goes. Better now, he says. That's that's absolutely correct. He's even come down from the 100. Full green, 64 ping now. 60s across the team, in fact, for Linwood from WA. That's the expected. And now it looks like Xavier is well and truly back into this. We've got a head-to-head -head with everybody at their peak now. And Kedron, they've got to fire back immediately. Yeah, that was such a good put back and he just he he knows he felt it as soon as he hit that one too he typed <laughs> yeah, it right in chat he's like I, i'm better now we're good let's let's run this now <laughs> it's good uh, it's, it's, this is match point for both teams and we're, we're good now <laughs> yep i love to see it game five super important one in fact the last one this is the decider as there has been the pushback in from kedron they need more though and right now they are struggling just to get this out of their half matthew was barely in his own half will take it back good control here waiting tries for the fake it was one to beat probably could have taken that one but tried out that fake did not work out for him sometimes you have to take those easy goals you know that's what that's what it comes yeah. down to sometimes it's uh you don't need it's anything flashy you know to kind of score it looks good yeah. on the highlight reel i'll tell you that much but Sometimes uh, the, getting down to the nitty gritty, that's all you really need is depth. Almost scored Great that one. Sweat. Almost basically, uh, he had a dunk. He had a dunk play right there as well. Almost beat the defenders, but mm. just could not get that last touch. So that gets a lot of those nice touches there, like that. Yeah. Eh? Crucial stuff in midfield, but it doesn't score you points. So you are going to look worse on the uh, leaderboard, unfortunately. But Sweat has been very useful positioning well and oh my goodness just sniped out of the play this time by Def who's up so early on that yeah this is a good play right here from Def it's nothing really against the sweat he was just thinking that his teammates were going to advance that one at least get yeah. some sort of contact on it but instead it's a little bit of a whiff and just an even better read right there from Def so unfortunate that we're just kind of talking about him and he gets scored out in that situation yeah. but that's what happens sometimes uh, you, get, you get highlighted at the wrong moments but and it what? wasn't Go ahead. I was going to say, more importantly, we're, it's just, like, we're like you, Yeah, uh, like you were saying, though, it's not all about him. He positions around his team, and Xavier is showing up as the team right now. Matthew was the prominent do goal scorer when they were really fighting into this before, and suddenly Xavier upfield for a massive redirect, puts it into the corner of net, and Linwood are back up again.
Yeah, that's two goals right there for Xavier, but even a better pass right there from Matthew, like you said. Mm -hmm. He has been the more prominent person that just jumps out to us, has been Matthew, but now it's been Xavier who has been feeling himself. Matthew kind of, you know, forcing himself to fall back into that second, third man role and play more of a support role. And uh, why not? Like I said beforehand, whoever, is, whoever has the hot hand, give the ball to them because they're going to score you some points. Here it comes again, Matthew to the backboard, tries to that top right corner. And Sweat can't quite reach the mark now. Bit of a fight comes on again here. And, oh, almost the pinch found. Troby tried to line that up with Def, but goes back away to the midfield. To midfield we go, and to the two minute warning we go as well. Officially past the halfway point, 30 seconds or so ago. Troby at midfield, and this is what you know, Kedron does such a good job at. They, they do such a good job at controlling that midfield line, controlling that pressure. It's been such a different showing ever since that game number two. What a shot from Levi. Covered up, though, from Xavier. Double commitment for Linwood. Not really going to find its mark and going to fight another day is Kedron. Xavier with a 50 there, just dunked away. Sweat makes the oh save. My. It is on the line too. Had to use the post for it. A brilliant save found. And it keeps them in the lead, but it might not be for long. Levi waiting underneath like a vulture. He picks up the scraps and he's going to get a 115k an hour goal to even the game. Uh, 71 miles per hour for those of us. Now, the real, real, <laughs> the people, real people speed. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, back people, on that, I that, refer <laughs> you to my last Twitter post about that. <laughs> no, but that was uh, that was such a good uh, situational awareness right there from Levi. He did pick up that hundred pad as yeah. well, stole that away from the defense, and then just smart enough to turn on that one. You know, use the majority of that boost to pull that e break and just quickly sh score and uh, you know, equalize this ball game. Final 60 seconds, looking at another potential overtime. We had overtime all the way back in game number one, Gex, seems like forever ago. Yeah. But it's looking like another overtime game as that was a close shot from Levi, but Sweat's gonna keep that one out. We asked for a pickup from Sweat. Here it is, he's getting more than involved here. Two saves to his name and both right on the line, on the mark and possibly keeping the game Winnable for Kedron, for Linwood here. Kedron still pushing though, out of their own half this time as Levi gets caught on the wall with zero boost. Def almost gets the catch. It would have been a free drive home, but my goodness, just barely challenged in the nick of time. Yeah, Kedron is in trouble right here. They need a far clear. They're going to get that one right there to relieve all this pressure, but a majority of them had probably an average of 16 boosts on the pitch. Here goes Xavier with a good demolition oh, onto Def. This one's off the side wall. Good save from Def as well, who spawns right back in. Keeps that one out. Final second sticking away now. Here comes Troby. Going to try to shoot that one towards net. Xavier going to pop that one towards midfield. Has to redirect upfield. Oh, there goes Sweat as well. Can't catch up to it. It's going to hit the ground. We see ourselves on match point in OT game five. Great touch from the wheels there, but didn't keep it up enough for a second touch from a teammate or a shot on target. Levi now making an easy save in net as the pressure starts from Linwood again. It might get relieved very, very quickly. No third on that as Matthew pops it off his own backboard. A second touch actually delivers that down to Sweat and they get away unscathed. Yeah, another missed opportunity as well. Oh, this was off pass. the backboard. No one there, though, for Linwood. That's super surprising to me. Usually Xavier yeah. is there. He's usually lurking. Maybe even Sweat could have been there in that situation. That was such a good play right there for Matthew. Xavier now comes up field off Matthew again. It's that oh, two-man no. play. The shot is there, but Levi is faster. The save comes out. This is... Crucial stuff as Kedron starts on their counter attack. It's Troby now with possession and it will sit in the midfield for a moment. And that was an interesting play right there from Troby. He got that midfield boost and didn't go for the ball to keep that pressure on him. He could have had both probably had he just put some sort of contact onto the ball. Instead, he just went for the boost and gave a ball to Matthew at midfield with 100 boost. That's something you just cannot afford to do mm. in this overtime situation, especially with Matthew being just in such a, you know, being the scorer, the scorer here for this Linwood right squad. Touch. Matthew upfield again. Well, it hasn't been Matthew though. Not since game not, two. Not this game. Yeah. Xavier 
has been coming up now in this final game. And in fact, the only real score maker they've had since game two, as it's been all Kedron to talk about since that point. Now we come back into it, game five, suddenly we need more than Matthew. We need that pairing again. Xavier's not going to be a part of it this time around. Troby with the 1v1. Does he get it? Saved away by Xavier. That was such a good take, though. I'm not mad at Troby for no taking boost. that one because he was he was basically in the right position in, at the right point in time as well. This is dangerous territory, Ooh. though, for Kedron. That was popped up in the air. Xavier off the back wall. Oh, my the second touch. He got the contact. Could not shoot that one accurately, though. That would have been the game and a hat trick for Xavier. Oh, the raid is there. Matthew oh. can catch. Xavier's going to push this away. You can see the panic on Xavier. It might have just given opportunity to death, though. Xavier bumps again as well. It is chaos out of Xavier. He continues to bump teammates. Stop clearing your net. <laughs> Xavier's doing the most out here, but it's not the right thing to do. But at the same time, it's worked. it worked out for him. It worked out for him. Now he has to hit that reset. You see him just parked on that 100 pad, trying to get something going. A good demolition on the goal line from Matthew. Sweat can't put that one in. Matthew has to force to rotate through. So like I said before, Matthew just forcing himself to play more of a support role. And it's pretty much at this point in time, that 1v3 situation where Kedron is, is trying to utilize everybody on the pitch. And then you see Linwood just in shambles where Xavier and Matthew are just trying to get this one done. Levi, in the backboard, it's gonna come off Troby underneath, but Levi has to cut it because Matthew would have beaten as it comes back very, very high over the goals there. No opportunities here. Right this second for Kedron. They need more. They might have it. They've got a lot of pressure on this right now, but Xavier will have the chase on this. No read on Levi, and the attack continues. Still, Kedron has the pressure. And you would think they have the advantage as well. Levi, midfield. Has a lot of boost, pushes this one off the backboard. That goes deaf. He's not going to make any contact. Oh, demo. He raced off the field as Trovi from Xavier. It's going it to be is. put. It's going to put Kedron in good position oh. though, because they're going to have a defender back. Yeah, it finally broke that uh, pressure for a moment, but Sweat unfortunately pinned it back with that final touch. Now Sweat again with an opportunity. It does go away as Matthew positions on the backboard. That's a booming clear. Def can't get a good hold of it. And now Matthew back on it again, just over the crossbar. Oh, Good win no. for the second with Xavier there. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I was going to say, Xavier was there lurking towards midfield. Xavier with the flip reset. Oh, Xavier goodness. with another one. Oh, no. my goodness. He has the dagger, and he saves the game in OT for Linwood. Look at Xavier pop off King. Linwood take the series with the best goal of the series and it comes out of Xavier. We saw some pop off from Matthew, but game number five, Xavier on top. That was insane right there. He has three goals, ultimately having the hat trick as well. Just absolutely took over after that whole entire ping situation that he had to deal with. And then all of a sudden everything stabilizes for him. And he got enough ping to deal with uh, um, Kedron by himself, essentially. Uh, I, I'm not taking credit away from Matthew or from uh, from Sweet as well. They both had a bunch of saves, crucial saves as well. But ultimately, Xavier stood out in that game at number five. Yeah, uh, just unfortunately, I mean, he couldn't get that one extra point sitting on 999 at the end there. <laughs> I didn't even notice that's a right now. The <laughs> yeah, uh, no, Linwood doing extremely well under uh, Duress as well. I mean, they had so many ping issues. There were some up here for their opponents, though, uh, there as well. And uh, everybody kind of fighting through the uh, OCE situation we know as internet. Um, but yeah, a, a fantastic finish there. By the member of the team, we were maybe expecting the most issues out after those ping issues and everything as well. So big up to Xavier for overcoming that, uh, that mentally. Yeah, big ups to them. Big ups to uh, Kedron as well. They put up a heck of a fight and they, they, mm, they fought yeah. valiantly. Like I said, they had game one overtime, game five overtime. That's as close as it possibly gets. Two games going to uh, overtime in, in a best of five series. It's just uh, It just goes to show you that you know between these two teams here, Linwood and Kedron, it's literally a coin flip and uh, it, it's, it's a heck of a series. And I'd love to see the rivalry going on and being built here on the stream. But don't go anywhere. We have some more Rocket League action for you guys. We have Ripley, Raptors, Blue, 
taking on the toners and off stream we're gonna have linwood as well taking on the mrc saints so we're gonna keep you guys updated with all that information after the break Black out, black out, hit the lights, let it black out, black out. 
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the AEL High School Cup. This is week number two of the Mayhem Tournaments, and my name is Whoopshoe. Joined alongside of me is my good, good friend, Gex, and we have been covering a lot of Rocket League. In particular, we have been covering SPCC Light and Tangy, taking on Kendron in that game number one. 
Kendrog winning that matchup in a 3-0 fashion. And then, if you guys missed it, I promise you guys, you guys missed some great Rocket League. You had a best of five series, two overtimes in that one as well. And that was Kedron versus Linwood. Linwood ultimately winning that matchup three to two. But next, I want to talk about the sponsors real quick, making this possible for us to even be here casting this lovely, lovely uh, mm. uh, uh, high school action. Uh, the first one up is going to be Predator Gaming, the gaming PC partner who provided high-end gaming-focused PC solutions in both laptop and desktop formats, powered by Intel, of course. And then you have AOC Monitors, uh, the gaming monitor partnered um, uh, who provide the best in-class monitor solutions for gaming and all other needs for everybody here in uh, you know Australia and worldwide. Yeah, we've also got, uh, I mean, we can't go without the noodles. Indomie, the noodle partner yeah, made yeah, yeah. with high quality flour and selected ingredients and spices. A plate of Indomie mee goreng will certainly brighten up your day. Try any one of the flavors available today from your local grocer or at indomie.com.au. Of course. And number five, <laughs> Game on Cancer. The charity of choice of, for the AEL, who fund much-needed cancer research projects, projects with the AEL donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life-saving cause. If you'd like to donate as well, please head to the AEL's Tiltify campaign page. Of course, we want to hop into the standings as well. Thank you to the sponsors once again. But... Let's look over at the standings currently right now. Everything updated, of course. Number one, Kendron in first place at that one and one. The game differential would be huge and crucial. So Linwood needs to, like you said beforehand, Gex, come into this next game that they're playing off stream, mm. win that one in a three to zero fashion against the MRC Saints. But it's going to be a tough ask for Linwood, you know, currently sitting in that second place spot, hunting mm. for that first place spot. And Tona's uh, sitting there on a three-game di differential. They got their sweep early as well. It means that they're in a good spot to be able to come out into first place there as well. Um, I'm struggling to understand why Linwood are above Tona's right now. They've got a better game differential. Uh, it, it just could be a mix-up on the graphics on, the, on our end. Be, but at the be. same time, yeah, I do agree Equal with you on that one. second, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Toners are just such a solid team. You know, um, we're going to talk about it right now as we go into the head-to-head. -head. Um, against yeah. the Ripley Raptors, though, it's going to be a tough, tough one. The the, the Toners, they, they won this matchup last week, and um, they showed very, very good Rocket League, you know, gameplay is what, what I'm trying to say. But the Raptors, in my personal opinion, have left a lot there on the pitch. They could pull off an upset here today. I actually, look, I, I want to put it out there that we, we make some predictions here because I would 100% back the Ripley Raptors on this. They have history here. Invor in particular, uh, uh, he called me out as soon as he got in because uh, he's been around for so long. Uh, Critic as well, though, over on Toners. Fergo has been around for a while, but Invor is probably the player I'm looking for the biggest pop-off in this match. And I just saw some amazing redirects and stuff like that in even the warm-up from uh, Homeboy. So there's some really, really big options here for Ripley Raptors, I think. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a, like I said, the, the, the Raptors have a chance out here to, to prove as to why they should be up here in the top three. In my personal opinion, where they should be, um, they, they let the game kind of get away from them last week. They had a whole entire week to kind of study the film, go back against to see what they're going to do against the toners and uh, kind of address that as well. I really felt like the Raptors coming out here, you know, flashing some of these uh, season nine grand champion tags. And you see homeboy Jesus have it has an SSL tournament winner tag as well. Um, yeah. It just showed me that they have a lot more potential out here on the pitch. So uh, we're going to see if that's going to stand true or not. As we hop into game number one, you're leaning a little bit more towards, um, I believe you said uh, the toners. I'm leaning a little bit more towards no, the Raptors. No, I'm I'm on Raptors' side as well, okay. so we're going to have unanimous here. Critic, though, might have us dead to rights immediately. What a shot. Brilliance drops it down. And these two teams, I, this this is going to go off as a match. Yeah, I mean, this is not the way you want to start this one. And we've been seeing this time and time again, just how crucial kickoffs are in Rocket League. And I keep on repeating myself. I feel like every single Rocket League match, every single game that I cast, because mm -hmm. this is what happens. You start to set oh. up the next play that is presented to you on the pitch. And this is a, such a great play right here from Critic. That's incredible. Just outrunning the defense there. And Tona's 
And they're showing us why they're coming in as the higher seed here and why they got that uh, 3-0 win in their last series as well. So they are in position here to take out the first place spot if they can win this one, but still early, early days. Only half a minute gone out of this match, in fact, so far. And Ripley Raptors have a lot to fight for here as well. Yeah, they need to pick up on the offensive end. They need to get things going here. But at the same time, it's going to be a missed opportunity and a redirect upfield. That was almost such a brilliant play right there from brilliant, Brilliance. But instead... Right flick. Invor. Oh my goodness! The redirect! I was going to say, but instead we're going to have ourselves a far clear... It results in a goal. And a great redirect as well from Invor. That is an incredible play upfield to get the first one back into this for Ripley Raptors and might just be a precursor to more here. Uh, that's what I was looking for is just the connections out of Ripley Raptors. They are incredibly skilled players, very talented individually, but they can have issues when it comes to playing around each other. Once their rotations and their connections start getting made, that's when they become really scary. I agree with you on that one. That's why I think that they have a lot more to prove out here on the pitch. The toners did come out here and they started firing on all cylinders, but at the same time, I really felt like... Oh, racer? No. Close one. I thought I, I held my breath there for a second as well, Gex. I saw that one developing too, but at the same time, like I said before, I, I do foresee the Ripley Raptors too. If they're not going to do it this week, then definitely for sure in the future, going to be one of those teams that will keep your eye on. Coming down, it will be a free clear here for Homeboy. He's going to try and play the field, though. Good flick nearly gets Brilliance, but the defense holds. Critic down, Invor tried for the ground pinch in, but the defense continuing to get this away to the midfield from Tonus. So lots of time left. Both teams being very, Ooh. very smart with some of these touches. That was a close one right there. Homeboy Jesus in trouble. Just kind of hit that one with the undercarriage of his car. And on top of that, just making a mistake there on the uh, defensive end. Trying to challenge that one tad bit too early. But it did work out for this uh, Raptor squad for the most part. Seeing this battle for this midfield line. Jesus, once again, just bumping that one towards their corner. That one oh. could be a mistake. Critic just shoots that one a little bit too hard. It's not going to find its mark. At the midfield now, Brilliance is going to get the first touch to this. But right away by Vihili now. Hilly trying to get some play out of this, but just cannot find a teammate. This is the issues I was talking about for the Raptors. They rely too much on these solo players. If anybody was there backing the Hilly up there, they might have gotten away with something. Two minutes, 11 oh. seconds. Kurenik is going to get the dunk. Going to push another goal in favor of the Toners. A good play right here from Brilliance. Once again, pushing this one off the back wall. Invor was there. But he just could not get the read. That flat car, Gex, you, you're a flat car user. <laughs> I mean, did that play something uh, maybe with that uh, offensive play there? I, you do get the more power off the nose, uh, but realistically, I don't think that there's any hitbox that has a massive advantage on offense specifically, unless you're looking at power alone. And it, the ma vast majority of the time, if you're up against really high caliber players, power is not what you're missing. It's the it's the exact placements, it's the mechanics on those goals, or it's the teammates opening up the play for you. You're trying to blame your teammates in a fancy way, Gex? <laughs> yes. Okay. My ranked uh, teammates, they never, uh, never open up the plays for me, even though I play Dominus. That's... I got you. I mean, we're coming from a Fennec player and uh, everything else <laughs> under the sun as well. I mean, I, I don't think it's the car. I think it's just the user at this Actually, point in time. <laughs> I, I went away to Fennec for the last week and was feeling a lot more Mackie out of it. I just was kind of losing control of those touches. I think the, the Fennec has so such good hip, uh, visuals to its hitbox. It's, it can be a lot easier to play on if you are just feeling a little bit of lack in the, uh, in the mechanics side. I mean, that's why I kind of play like, you know, the Honda Civic, the Mudcat. Like, I like those long, boxy cars. They still have the same hitbox as a Fennec or an Octane. Uh, but at the same time, it feels like it's the true hitbox, in my personal opinion. Um, because it's like the lengthier, like, it just feels like th that's what the car should feel like. And oh. speaking of which, look at Virgo going to be using this Octane right here to push another goal in favor of the Toners. And that whole entire time, the Toners, we, me and you have been talking about cars. They just had so much pressure on the offensive end. Yeah. 
If Fergo's on Octane telling you that's how a car should feel, it no, should no, no, be no, no. feeling like back of the net as <laughs> the goal goes in. This is a big first game out of Toners, but I can't imagine that there won't be an answer back. But Ripley Raptors, I mean, just look at the amount of touches that are being found by Ripley Raptors versus Toners. They look at the shot count alone, six out of Critic. Uh, Ripley Raptors just aren't getting enough of the ball on field. They've had no uh, pitch dominance, and as a result, they're not finding each other. They're not, uh, or maybe as a, as a result of not finding each other, that is the case. Final 15 oh, seconds oh, here no. in game number one. And yeah, I was going to say that was such a good attempt right there from Invor, but not going to find its mark. Five seconds now left on the clock. Brilliance going to bring that one over into the corner. And more going to go ahead and try to keep this one up in the air. Homeboy just side flips. Unfortunate to see, but at the same time, it's going to be to no avail. Four to one in favor of the Toners. And they came off firing hot Gex. They scored two goals initially. Or, uh, yeah, initially off of the kickoff and uh, just pretty much never looked back after that moment. That is a big, big statement game out of game one from Toners against Ripley Raptors, who have been pretty uh, dominant every time they've appeared here in AEL in the past as well, still sporting most of those players as well. So uh, Toners are really, really coming up looking fantastic coming into the AEL high school series. Yeah, I mean, they are. They, they made such a strong impact last week as well. Um, I was really, really impressed by them. And on top of that, I think me and uh, Max were trying to figure out as to what a actual toner was as far as like a mascot goes if that was like you know it's just a just a printer cartridge <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I was going more like a, maybe a musical kind of school like the toners you know what i mean like like that's like what i was the, going like towards. the little uh the the tuning fork should be a tuning fork yeah, something along those lines. But that's no. what we were trying to figure out last no, week. Is still I, no, it's like the printer cartridge. I mean, okay, I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> printer toner. There, you there, go. there we go. I'm going to take your word for it. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. We were trying to figure it out. And I never really did the research for it. But I'm going to do the no, research. I have and... no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> I was sold. Like, dude, I really you sold me. I, I would have ran be. with that if the whole time. School had, if the school had a printer cartridge as their logo. Oh, man. <laughs> they, they've got my full support. That's hilarious. I'm gonna make a school and have a floppy disk as my school mascot. No, <laughs> it's incredible. Anyway, hopping into game number two. Yeah, we're gonna have to see a lot more offense though, regardless from the Ripley Raptors. Uh, they didn't really have too many chances on the offensive end, only a handful. And the ones I can think about, you see Critic. Um, Critic? But I don't understand <laughs> what's going on with Critic, but it doesn't matter because- uh, that boost? Yeah, Inboard's just gonna not score on the offensive end. Critic just didn't care. He was like, yeah, it's, it doesn't matter if it's open. I want this boost. That's 100. That's all that counts. Yeah, it just comes full, out. Fergo off the backboard again. I was going to say, just full belief in his teammates there. You know, he, he knew <laughs> yeah, exactly. his teammates were going to get the job done. And he was just wanted Maybe it was too that. much faith in the opponents. <laughs> Ooh, disrespectful, disrespectful, whatever nah, it may it be. Just the, uh, it's, it was the Invor open net miss from last game for me, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. what a touch! It might oh. be enough! There it is, homeboy oh Jesus. It's actually going to be Ripley Raptors coming up with the first point in game two to shut my mouth. Yeah, you remember what I said last time? The goals don't have to look pretty. They just have to cross yeah. that line, and that's exactly case in point right there. It's not going to look good on the highlight reel. We're not going to put that one in the in, in the final package by, at the end of the show by any means. But at the same time, um, those ones get the job done and they, more importantly, take the lead for you. The Hill Devils. Coming across again. It's Fergo with so much control of that. We've seen him do that a couple of times. Just that, that full dribble across the pitch, side to side, over and over again to make sure that they have full control of that Invor underneath. This is a great dribble, might have it. Fergo just gets it past him, but there's the shot again. And the defense holds on the line. It's brilliance for the second touch. Yeah, for the most part, it's really been this, oh. wow, almost a good design right there for the Raptors, but can't really get the bump on the goal line was homeboy Jesus Invor going for the flip resets, go, trying to go for the musty flick as well to try to just advance that one in favor mm. of the Raptors. And they do still have this pressure but at the same time, they really haven't done much with the pressure. They have really haven't put many respectable shots onto the uh, onto the nets or the toners. Coming away again now. Fergo underneath as B Hill. 
Down, look for Invor. Now it's important for that second touch, and he finds it. Fergo trying for this. The, the mechanics coming out from Toners right now. Just being met with a wall of defense by heavily one player there. V Hill standing up on the line. That was a good shot attempt right there from Critic as well. Defense standing so tall though for the Raptors. And this game has come and gone. A minute and 40 seconds left. Oh, Invor! Close shot from Invor. Not going to find us. Mark Virgo was trying to go for that challenge. We get credited for a save, I believe, as well. But look at the pressure that's being mounted though from the Raptors. That one I can't blame for not going in either. And that high shot off crossbar is what was needed to actually get past a, a wall of defense that was standing in front of him. Uh, the shot was the right option there. Just unfortunately he couldn't make the angle. However, Ripley Raptors still remain up by one, so they don't necessarily need it at the moment. Toners definitely do, and they have had sparing chances upfield, like you were saying, just so much pressure from Ripley Raptors. But once again, just not really putting respectable shots towards the net. The defense just kind of clears these ones away towards the corners. They have the pressure. I mean, it's, it's working out for them because, I mean, the, the longer yeah. this one goes on, the, the clock is just working for them. What a save right there from V Hill Devils. Inboard oh. in a little bit of trouble. Critic, Critic. Push that, put that one back. Homeboy Jesus in complete control. So a couple of shots right there for the toners. And they have the offensive opportunities as well, but they just haven't found their mark either. Yeah. I think because of the amount of pressure Ripley Raptors have put up field, it, it's been much harder to find these opportunities. Brilliance finally gets the spike, and they even up immediately. Yeah, that's a good shot right here from Brilliance. And we have Homeboy Jesus coming off the back wall. Then you have V-Hill Devils, who was just too far back into the net to try to even attempt to save that one. Uh, the reaction time just gets cut down in half. I would, I would say the closer that one gets in, in close, close to the net. And on top of that, it's an aerial attempt too, so you're kind of masked a little bit by that top crossbar. Fergo bumped there by, I believe that was Invor. Does open up another chance for possibly a lead from Ripley Raptors, but VL is caught awkwardly underneath. Invor has to get into a position to try and make an offense out of this, but right now they just need to go to overtime. Either team still in with a chance, and we do have that overtime in hand. Yeah, this is only game number two, and so far, it's looking a lot better than game number one. A good shot from yeah. Envor as well. Five shots total for him. Still haven't found the mark in that first oh, goal. Oh. Opportunity is now as Envor gets it upfield as well. Fergo is going to have a big say on that. That's a huge touch and a good follow on it. Oh, homeboy can't quite find the touch. I just feel like I'm bantering with a friend every time I say the name. Homeboy? <laughs> I mean, Homeboy had little My boost. homeboy? He's, yeah, he's my, he's my homeboy Jesus. For real, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he had, like, little boost to try to even attempt that one, so I'm, I'm surprised that uh, he called his teammates off in that situation, but Brilliance was, did a good job at, you know, trusting the process, essentially, and, and not believing that he had that second touch and just put himself in a better position. Virgo's not going to reach the boost, but Critic has a beat on everyone. And V-Hill doesn't get a touch. Low boost situation. It comes off the crossbar. That's an amazing save from Homeboy Jesus there. V-Hill can't quite get involved in the play here yet, but it is back up the other end, and now Toners have to start to worry. I mean, the Toners are just... I really feel like they're the, the more mechanical team. Like, you've seen so many flashy shots. Yeah. Oh, they are. So many, like, uh, just different angles that they're, they're trying to attack with. But it just seems like the Raptors are just unfazed by it. And on top of that, oh, oh my goodness. Invor almost scoring that one. Going to be denied, though, from the defense. But I was going to say, for the most part, like, the, the Raptors just have not been phased by a lot of these shot attempts. Oh. Except for that one from Virgo. Virgo just kind of cut the difference here so many players scrambling on field v hill got a touch nimble was up for the pass so fergo is threading the needle takes it home for game number two for the toners yeah good shot placement right there from fergo like i said more aerial assault um is the toners in this uh rocket league matchup uh the raptors need to do a better job at you know trying to either cover those up or combat those by taking away some of those passing lanes and some of those shooting lanes you see them try to come out the box just a tad bit too much in that overtime matchup it did not work out for them in that in, in that matchup here in ot but at the same time they did start to uh they started to kind of 
realized what to do, you know, as, as that one started progressing a lot more, the toners just got the better of them. I'm starting to understand why printer ink is so expensive. Toners oh my are just, gosh. Uh, there's so much value behind these players. <laughs> All right, this going is... back in for game three, there's still improvements to be made by Ripley Raptors, I think. They have shown us some really, really good stuff when they get onto uh, offense, but they only remain on it for a little while. Pressure has not really been the game for Ripley Raptors. They continually let it back to well past the midfield line, and then Toners, they don't really have any trouble from that point on. I, I agree with you. I mean, they just, they just have to you know, think outside the box. Think outside the tone or box. <laughs> I was trying to make it fit. I have no idea. I was trying to make, I was the trying. toner box. The toner box. The that printer. one's going think to outside, clip real for sure. <laughs> think outside the printer box. You okay? Yeah. No, but uh, yep. but seriously, I mean, it just seems like to me that the Raptors, you know, it's it's their game to lose essentially at this point in time. The, the toners, they they have such a good offense and like i said before they, they just they're more aerial with a lot of their attempts but at the same time oh. like that was a close play i thought that Hill devils was actually going to connect with that one and maybe score on that left lane but at the same time like yeah i'm trying to get my point across and these guys are just out here on the pitch just doing phenomenal things yeah homeboy does get up and a touch on that means invo can grab it tries for the redirect play but they will be able to hold an offense here for a moment. Invo in onto it. A good 50. Fergo gets the pinch and follows through. And oh my goodness, a triple commit actually gets the ball through as Homeboy gets in off the corner. Zero boost. A small touch will hit, keep Fergo from the touch he wanted. I want to point out that Invo had about six shots. Oh, Invo. Invo. Oh! He had about six shots last game. Garrett. Homeboy G's is going to score. I didn't that think one. that was in. I didn't think it was either. I, I'm, I thought that was just my lag in that situation, but yeah. I, I, no, like absolutely 100% did not. I thought that was wide. That's a that's a great shot yep. coming in, especially with defense there. But yeah, I, I really did not think that was going in. So brilliant, uh, surprising shot for everybody, I guess. Yeah, that was, a, that was just a good shot. Oh boy, Jesus. Um, but I want to say Invor, I mean, this is what we're talking about. The, the, the Raptors. He had six shots. I mean, if any of these shots basically go in for the Raptors, it's such a different ball game. He has mm. two right now in this one where he should have probably scored a majority of them, but at the same time, he oh, just has it. not found the mark. Down to Fergo. There's the mark, and it's Toners back into this again. The lead found by Ripley Raptors is it has been once before, but quickly taken away as Toners just work on another level. Yeah, good shot. Good placement, tons of pressure right there for the toners. And on top of that, once again, just the exclamation point on that offense. Here comes brilliance now. The Devils are trying to combat that offense, trying to keep this one towards the orange half of the field. Not going to work out for them just now. Oh boy, Jesus needs to get a touch on this one. He does. He has the air dribble, gets bumped off of it, though, so unfortunate for the Raptors. Coming back down again now, Fergo out. Critic, way to Invor. Now, grabbing control of that, it's V-Hill to get it upfield, a good 50, but Critic will be able to hand this back downfield. Now, as Invor makes a challenge again, we'll come back. It's just back and forth, changing mm -hmm. hands side to side of this field. I do like what Invor did there in that situation. He did play a little bit of mind games against Fergo. Made Fergo guess in that situation. Oh my goodness, Whoa. the shot from Critic not going to find this mark too high. I was going to say, if they, if oh boy Jesus got that one past Brilliance, they could have had a breakaway situation on the offensive end. Critic has been uh, the vast majority of the promising shots out of Toners for the series so far as well. Of course, he's not the only goal scorer on this team for this game. It is uh, Fergo standing up with that right, but Critic now might be able to change it. Taking it to ground, good challenge by V-Hill. And it gets well back away again. V-Hill's going to take the boost as it comes around. Invor underneath to collect as it pops out nearly over Critic. And in the midfield, there will be a shot put on. A bump on Fergo might have confirmed it. The physical play is not there. The shot is saved from Fergo again. Yeah, but Invor 
as that pressure the defense from the toners just been standing so tall against the little opportunities that the raptors have had and they've been keeping this one pretty much away from the front of the box they've been pushing a lot of the shots and uh, a lot of challenges over into the corners so it's keeping for the most part the raptors at bay under 60 seconds Fall to go, Gex. This is still one to one. Mm. Far less physical play in this series than we saw out of uh, any of the teams we've seen so far today, or any three, I suppose. We did have a repeat. But yeah, I, I kind of see that working out more for Ripley Raptors at this point. They're already playing a scrappy play style, so they can probably respond to that a little better. But Toners. They have such defined rotations. There's usually one back in defense at all times. If you open that up, you can get wow. the plays, but Critic sees the opening himself. And a brilliant redirect shot here, taken off the back of Fergo. No chance for the defense. Yeah, no chance at all. And that was such a good pass from the toners off the sidewall. That's not an easy task right there for Fergo to, to push that one upfield like that especially just being in transition like that and just to catch the defense off guard the final 15 seconds here in game number three toners trying to get this one in a sweeping fashion brilliance last attempt right here for the offense i was going to say of the oh, toners no, but the raptors real. need to keep it up in the air potentially to force this overtime matchup can they do that critic now, homeboy oh. Jesus now in more gave up. He stopped moving on the pitch. He needs to believe at this zero second mark. Oh. Not going to happen. And that's going to be all she wrote here. The toners are going to win this matchup in a three to zero fashion and uh, win this one two to one, guys. Uh, we probably uh, made the wrong made the wrong predictions here. <laughs> you know what? Toners I actually uh, going brilliantly. I, I I want the Raptors to win. I want them to be successful. Like I said, they played the mm. Toners last week, and it was just unfortunate that they lost in that situation. They played this one a lot better. They're improving. I honestly yeah. was going to go with the Toners. That was a safer pick. But at the same time, I I wanted to see just I wanted to see the Raptors just win, and at least maybe take it to Game Five. Yeah, just needed to see some a little bit of sure-footedness uh, from them. I think it was it was the question you could see in their own eyes that that let them down a lot of the time there. But when they had the confidence, when they were up in the uh, opponent's half, shooting on net, getting that pressure on, they actually looked better. But they didn't hold it. They kept running back. The the fear uh, was visible. So if they can conquer that, I think it was definitely a lot of mental advantage there for the Toners as well. Uh, there was a lot going the Toners way, don't get me wrong. They were physically incredible players. So um, it's a it's a big win that was well deserved there. But I still see more for Ripley Raptors again. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, especially if the, uh, in my personal opinion, if Invor gets, you know, maybe some training packs under his belt, because like I said, you can't have zero goals off of six shots. And yep. then even in that last game, you had a couple of shots that should have been in. He only had two registered shots, um, you know, in that final game here in game three. But at the same time, those are two crucial shots that could have been swayed in favor of the Raptors. And one mm -hmm. of them I can think back to that he should have actually made, but he just did not hit it with enough power. Um, thinking back to that game number one, I do have the stats for that one as well. He did have a goal, but it was off of one of two shots once again. So not really shooting the best were, were the Raptors. And it, it just goes to show you that they still kept themselves combative in this game against the Toners. Oh, very competitive game there, but it does uh, secure a really good position from the Toners. who should be able to go straight to the top of the list now. Yep, there they are up in first in the standings. So uh, that's what you want to see for Toners playing that well, playing just so solidly. Every time there looked to be a lead for the other side, it disappeared in an instant and uh, they knew exactly what they were doing with that series. Yeah, well, don't go anywhere. We do have some more Rocket League action for you guys. We're going to have the MRC Saints versus the Ripley Raptors. And right now, the Saints are taking on Linwood. So we could potentially see that matchup. Actually, that score is just being reported right now. Linwood actually did win that matchup 3-0. to zero. So we are going to see the MRC Saints taking on the Ripley Raptors blue squad after the break.
Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for sticking with us through that break. We have one more game left on the docket for us today. This is the AEL High School Cup. My name is Whoopshu, and joined alongside of me, of course, you guys know him, you guys love him. I love him, of course. My good friend Gex is sitting next to me here in the booth watching today's action. If you guys missed it, don't worry. We have the wrap-up for you guys right now. We have some standings for you. Um, and I promise you guys on, on Gex, it's, it's going to be right. Am I right, Gex? It's going to it's gonna be okay? It's going to be right. It's going to be right. It's right. It is right. Tona's <laughs> Rocket League on top. You're Linwood so coming in second. They're our two uh, undefeated teams so far since the qualifiers. And uh, Kedron coming in a strong third, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe that's right, too. I think everybody's kind of laying as to where they should be laying right now. Mm. Uh, Toners, you know, coming out here with a good, strong exclamation point to start the season off here in week number two. Linwood, a very, very solid team as well. A hard-fought yeah. battle against, uh, you know, that Kedron's uh, uh, squad, too. So, I mean, Kedron, that solid, solid third-place team. And now we have the Ripley Raptors Blue and the MRC Saints on the docket, that four- and five-place team. Um, that, that's the next matchup that we're going to have today. Uh, but before we get into the head-to-head -head on that one, we're going to take a look at the schedule real quick. Um, of course, like I said beforehand, up next we have the MRC versus the RVSB. And then uh, the follow-up game that's going to be played off-stream is that MRC... Uh, is that correct? I think it's the MRC game that was played already. I think they actually um, won that matchup. Uh, that was uh, Linwood won that matchup 3-0 to zero in their favor. Yep. So yeah, this is the last matchup we guys have for you today. Other than that, uh, we're going to hop into the head-to-head -head for this matchup right here, MRC Saints versus the Raptors. And in my personal opinion, this is a good test as well for the Raptors. I really feel like they could kind of pull one over the Saints, but I, I, the Saints are not going to go laying down. Uh, no, I don't think so at all. Both of these uh, teams are here for their redemption arc. Both have lost one series today, and both went out in 3-0 sweeps as well. I think uh, Ripley Raptors Blue are definitely here to show up. Looking at how they play, and I was just saying this to you in the break, when they're in the warm-up, particularly Invor, like, they are just a completely different team. They play out so well, so mechanically. But, I mean, looking across... Uh, Mentone Grammar Toners. That's, is this not the, the, uh, that's the wrong graphic. Is, that's the last game's yeah, graphic. Yeah, this, this is last game's <laughs> graphic. Uh, Ripley Raptors Blue will not be up against uh, uh, a be against themselves either. Uh, <laughs> we're going to see it come up right eventually here. Yeah, it's the MRC Saints, and you know that's Crypto. Um, yeah. Basically, Super Nye, I believe, is on that squad as well. Um, but at the same time, like it's... The, the, the Saints, I could think back to the, the, the qualifying, the week number one. Yeah, there it is. That's right now. And uh, But I can think back to week number one. They took on Trinity Esports. They, they, they were really, really good. They showed themselves like a, a solid team. But at the same time, I really feel like the Raptors might have just a slight leg up over them. Especially if, if the Raptors play, like you said, we're playing how they were in that warm-up match. They do look a lot differently in these warm-up matches than they actually do in the real games. Yeah, uh, if I see Invor playing with the mechanics he does, I don't see them having too much of an issue here. However, Crypto uh, has been absolutely dominant in the past. I've, I remember seeing him previously. He's been fantastic. Uh, the MRC Saints in general coming in here with a fairly big roster as well. It's hard to see how they go down 3-0 to zero here, but it's been a tough competition today. I mean, they, they lost three to zero against Linwood. That's yeah. why they lost yeah. three to zero. Yeah, it's, true. it's a tough, yeah. it's a tough Linwood ass. Massive. Yeah, mm -hmm. Linwood's just a really, really good team. Like I said, just sh should be rightfully so in that first place spot. But of course, like we said beforehand, the Toners just having a better day today with that game differential in their favor. But um, yeah, the Saints, like I said, this is anybody's ball game. This is literally a coin flip in my personal opinion. Um, the Raptors can come out here. They can, they can they can shock the Saints and you know keep them down there in that fourth place spot and, or fifth place spot, whatever it may be. Mm. And then um, basically, it's the Raptors' game to lose as well. The Saints can come out here and just do the same. That's why I say this is a literal coin flip as to who's going to win this matchup. Well, let's see if Invor can play like that without me passing to him in the uh, <laughs> in the warm up. It's uh, MRC Saints on blue, Ripley Raptors on orange. Let's get this thing started. I don't believe that that was you, Gex, okay? You told me your teammates were trash, and this is, you know, yeah. So that's, that's what it comes down to. I, I, you blame your teammates too much. That was an Invor just yeah, you know, shining, shining star moment for him, okay? Invor again here might have that opportunity, but it comes down 
to your homeboy Jesus who cannot finish it off. V Hill now. Good opportunity. Does he get the beat? Yes, he does. And Crypto off the post, just barely getting that save. Yeah, huge save right there for the defense. This is the Raptors team that I was talking about. They they have the offense. They can do some good things, but they just need to find the back of the net with a lot of these shots because they have the opportunities. They don't need opportunities. They just need to capitalize on the ones that are presented to them. And Vor, going to bring that one up. Super not going to deny that one temporarily. We're going to see a transition on the offensive end. Now Ghosty going to be denied, though, by Devil. Super Nye. Has been working well as a third man here, but he needs to get upfield and push forward if there's going to be a chance for MLC Saints. So far, most of the aggression coming out of the Raptors here. Ghosty pushing forwards, and Invor again with the mechanics gets the reset. Will go to ground with it as well. And another touch, but not getting that through the line of defense. Needs the support from the team. Big bumps on multiple players there as uh, the attack goes through. And boy, Jesus trying to throw a wrench in the works, but not going to happen just yet. I do like that patience right here from Crypto. He saw Ghosty had a second touch mm -hmm. on that one. Yeah. Tried to get it done by himself as well. Usually what you see is you'll, you'll see the team kind of push up together and maybe Crypto bumping Ghosty off the ball will lead to some sort of chaos that happens. The communication strong right here like that. for the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The communication is strong for the Saints. So you love to see it, but at the same time, um, it was just another missed opportunity though for the Saints. As the caster curses start to come through, let's see if there can be a goal for Ripley Raptors as they once again start an attack run. And so much pressure from them. Ghosty with a great, strong touch for a clear, but Invor misplays it. Now Crypto out to Ghosty, and they will have a clear. Homeboy Jesus now with V Hill doubling back. Won't have the support just yet. A big whiff there as well, and V Hill's positioning pays off as it comes back to that orange backboard. Comes in for now has to be very smart with what he's going to do with this ball. He does pinch that one over to the left hand side. Wasn't trying to do that. Guarantee he wants that attempt back. So no offense right there for the Raptors. But at the same time, the Saints knocking on the door. Crypto going to be denied by Invor. Super nine now not giving up on the offensive chance. V Hill Devil is going to clear this one over into the corner. I was going to say if homeboy Jesus maybe had a little bit more boost, he could have got Ariel and maybe challenged that one a little bit better. Crypto to the backboard again as V Hill makes his challenge in the corner. Now Ghosty well out over the backboard, but can it be sniped down by Super Nye? No. Crypto and Ghosty both double commit. And now last defender out of boost, but there's no attack from the Ripley Raptors. Where's the third? Homeboy Jesus coming in late. Gets a flick on one. Ghosty gets the defensive touch and it goes back away past the midfield. Yeah, here comes Envor now. He has all three members of the Saints in front of his face. Trying to get something to happen. Gonna pop, bounce that one back towards midfield. Homeboy Jesus being very smart. Going aerial. Trying to, uh, you know, mix it up just a tad bit on the offensive end. Just couldn't find the contact that he needed to advance that one over towards the blue half of the field. But luckily he has some teammates with him as well. And there just really hasn't been a clear, concise shot just yet for the Raptors. Oh, it's it's reminiscent to, to, to the game before. Yeah, uh, this is what we see every time they get the pressure on them. They just can't get those mechanics out. A good opportunity not coming off of their own touch there. Oh, my. As Homeboy Jesus just keeps it in front of net. There's nobody to follow it up. And finally, Invor comes through. Absolutely lacking touch. No finishing power. There's no ice here for Ripley Raptors. And once again, another mix-up on the offensive end as well for the Saints. They're trying to get it clear there. I think that was Ghosty and Super Nye that time just kind of combating each other to for the clear. There this is, is a good layup of a pass, though. Homeboy Jesus going to secure the first goal and short time remaining, Gex. Finally, just a simple shot taken well. A bang put into placement on that bottom left corner, and they come up with the goal. And that's what it takes sometimes. You don't need to get fancy with this. Invor may be relying on his mechanics too much when we yep. get into game. I think that might be the one of the most crucial things here. And finally, we see it come down. Homeboy Jesus is willing to just take the shot, and it does go home. Final 20 seconds, though, here in game number one. Let's see if this was going to be done in regulation. Here comes the musty yep. flick. Yeah, he was trying to be a little fancy, but he had the whole... Regular flick. Yeah, exactly. Or, or just drive it to the left-hand side of the net, and yeah. you, you score yourself a goal there. Instead, it's going to be another attempt 
Five seconds oh, remaining. Invor. Another shot from Invor. Not going to find its mark. Go see with a far shot. The Hill Devils, though, was going to receive it. Not enough time on the clock. And it looks like the Raptors are going to hang on and win this first matchup 1-0. to yeah, well deserved. I think they just spent so much time on the ball. They they had the dominance on field. They were constantly creating pressure. They had the attacking half of that game in their hands. So Ripley Raptors should come up on top. If you don't take the shots, you're not going to get there. Uh, in saying that, there were some shots out. Uh, I believe six there from the MRC Saints, but it's not enough when you put it in comparison to the overwhelming attack that Rap Ripley Raptors had, even if they weren't finishing them off the vast majority of the time. I mean, yeah, I was going to say that it comes down to the constant pressure and fear that a goal is going to be scored at any moment, which would, mm -hmm. could have happened. Uh, they had nine shot attempts. That's the Raptors in that game number one. Seven total saves for the Saints. So two big missed opportunities right there for the Raptors yeah. to score some goals. But the, the constant pressure, then finally cracking oh. the code of the vault. I was going to say Inbor is going to score this first one here in game number two. One for one uh, shot conversion. A lot better than nine for one. Let's let's keep this up. Uh, <laughs> Invor slots it straight away. Like you said, an early, early goal coming out here from Ripley Raptors. And MLC Saints are going to spend the game chasing this scoreline. And I want to see them score some more goals as Crypto is going to go ahead and just deny this, uh, this lead for very long. Right back to zero to zero, basically, at this point in time. But I, I was going to say, I want to see a lot more goals from the Raptors. Don't, don't be um, complacent with just that one goal that you just scored. And, uh, I mean, speaking of more goals, that's the first one in the series out of MRC Saints. So opening them up, maybe giving them the uh, confidence. Oftentimes you do see that first one if it takes a while to get out there. It does break the floodgates. And there's another shot on target from Crypto. Great upfield pass played out well, but the defense was there not even a minute off the clock barely 30 seconds off the clock actually oh, ourselves no. two goals V hill devils did have a chance at that one there goes homeboy jesus with a follow-up touch not going to find its mark let me deny by the defense crypto clear that one towards midfield in not really trying to rush it too much not trying to uh put himself and his defense in the predicament which I do like that a lot because his, his teammates were still kind of rotating on the back end. It could have uh, came from a fast pop shot, maybe uh, found the back of the net there in favor of the Saints. Crypto underneath now, bumped forward though. As Ghosty comes up to the backboard it goes, Invor will intercept, but this is a lot more back and forth. This is what you want to see out of a series that realistically coming into oh, this should no. have been even Ghosty, no! Why would you make that touch? I know there was pressure on, but this no. is brutal. Ghosty's going to get it for free, but homeboy Jesus gifted it. There's there's no reason. There's no reason to touch that ball. I know Ghosty was in the vicinity of that ball, yeah. but he had no clear shot. Crypto was kind of lurking up as well, but still, you put oh. yourself behind that ball, maybe get vertical and wish for the best of luck. At least, it doesn't, at least it's not an own goal and deflating for your team. Yeah. Wow, good read there on defense. Homeboy Jesus, just a little savior there. I don't know if they would have the confidence after going down by two here. Just that little buffer could make a huge difference to this game. While it's only one, it's still anybody's game, particularly with three minutes left on the board as it comes back away. So much time left untouched, this ball floating at times because of a uh, willingness to commit from Ripley at Raptors, which is what we saw last series from them. I do like that play right there from V Hill Devils as well. He didn't he didn't rush that one either. He was playing a little bit of mind games. He let the defense kind of cheat up on that one. He they thought he was gonna hit it. He just backed up a little bit. And floating. Yeah. I was gonna say he got them uh, he got them up in the air, got them vertical as well, but still dangerous. Oh, that touch? Does he get the double? Oh my goodness! Homeboy Jesus chases it full length of the field for the backboard. What a shot on that. I'm surprised he caught up to this one. I thought he ran out of boost yeah. a long time Same. ago. That was an insane read. And to, to, to uh, what's it called? Redirect yourself in the air like that is not an easy task. And then to have the double as well on top of all that. What a beautiful goal right there from Homeboy Jesus. That's exactly what you want to see out of the team that came up first in the series. 
Ripley Raptors now equalizing again. It comes off the ceiling. Crypto has made a huge impact on this match alongside Ghosty there from the MRC Saints. Super Nye yet to really get into this game and we're well past halfway. That's such an unfortunate missed opportunity as well from the Raptors. You saw that waterfall pass right in front of V-Hill Devil's screen. He accidentally backflips. Here comes a nice mm. gather though from Homeboy Jesus going from ground to air. Trying to have that second touch as well. Ghost, he's going to cover it up. It's going to fall back towards midfield. Nobody there to receive it. Invor trying to maybe get the double touch off the back wall. Not going to find it smart though. Crypto now in a 1v1 oh. with a huge dunk right on top of V-Hill Devils. It's just under the crossbar. The placement is perfect off this dunk. And it puts them back in the lead as well. MRC Saints 3-2 to two right now. And the clock starting to look a little bit threatening. There hasn't been a lot of goals in these games. And I can imagine a minute 40 passing without another one. So Ripley Raptors are going to have to push themselves. Definitely need to push themselves past. Dig deep here and maybe get creative. That's a good, good creative play Invor, right here yeah. from Envor. Is it going to find anybody? Homeboy Jesus with a ground to air. Crypto 50 off the back wall. The Hill oh, Devils. Invor. There goes Envor. He's going to score this one. Tie the ball game right back up. Fantastic pass here by V Hill. Super Nye got bumped by Envor on his way through, which kept the defense from the save and made it easy for Envor to slot that one into the back. And that again, we go back to an even ball game and Invor back with possession again in the midfield. Oh, Ew, I was going to say, I held my breath there for a second, trying to see if he was going to have that second touch or not. Just could not get that pop in his favor. Not enough boost to work with either. Ghost, going to have a far clear. Going to try to starve the defense of the boost. He's going to go for the second touch, which is smart. It's a good play right there from great Ghosty. Pass. And this is a great oh, pass no. and great gather, but Homeboy Jesus is a little bit too far to the right-hand side. They do float that one right back towards the middle of the field. Crypto Dope, though, oh, plays smart oh, defense. My goodness. Oh. Oh, wow. my goodness. <laughs> Just the chase. And that mechanics to get back to that left hand side of the ball get angle on the ball that is a near impossible touch yeah i agree with you on that one that's that's flat car power right there okay that's all i'm gonna say with that one uh three goals though for Invor. he has himself a hat trick off of four shots more importantly you see the raptors with the lead 30 seconds left gex well, one more chance here for the Saints. It's been a big push back from Ripley Raptors, who were down in this game. Great touch there from Homeboy, but blocked away instantly, and a big chase put on from MRC Saints. They want to start this aggression up early, and they will, but Black's shot on net from Invor oh, will go man. back upfield, and it's another one away, and that should confirm the game for Ripley Raptors. Yeah, that's a good, good take right here from Envor. Yeah. He just reads that one perfectly. That is indeed going to be the dagger here for the Saints. Five to three. I mean, something crazy could kind of happen in eight seconds. They need that kickoff to go in their favor. It's not going to work out. Crypto off the back wall now. Maybe can cross the finish line with maybe another goal. Not going to happen. Ripley Raptor is going to win this matchup. Gex five to three. And yep. move officially on to match point. That's a big win. Uh, you got to say we are on the verge of our third sweep on stream for the day. Can mm -hmm. Ripley Raptors do it? There's been a big pushback from the MRC Saints. I would be surprised if uh, we did see a full sweep coming out of this matchup. However, my surprise is disappearing fairly quickly. I was gonna say I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say we're gonna see a sweep out here. I, I, I'm yeah. gonna say we're gonna see a sweep out here. My apologies. I really feel like the Saints did start to get hot there at the right moments, but at the same time, the Raptors really did combat that at the right moments as well. Um, look at look at Invor with the luckiest number in the world: seven 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 Gex <laughs> as far as his total score goes. Heavenly four, four goals as well in this game too. So, like I said before, if Invor can actually start to score with some of these opportunities that the raptors have then a hundred percent they're going to be one of these teams that are going to take games away from teams like linwood from teams like the toners who they should have beat in my personal opinion um 
they, they just need to capitalize on a lot of the opportunities that they have. 777 was the uh, the number I was expecting from my homeboy Jesus for real, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to come out from Invor. Let's see if it can reach that peak again. It was definitely the peak we've seen from Invor today out of either series, I think. He had some good reads. He had some good takes as well. Um, you know, thinking back to that one very, very tough angle. Look at Homeboy Jesus I mean, and him. They, they were communicating very strongly. It was a backflip from Homeboy Jesus, and yeah. he, went for, he went for the ball. I mean, we had uh, so many situations where Invor was unnecessarily using big, flashy mechanics that cost yep. them the series in the, in the previous series. Uh, and now we're seeing Invor kind of rein that in a bit. But when he goes and does use his mechanical ability, it, it, the choice is right to do that at that moment. And coming through now, it's V-Hill with the shot. It's on target. Oh my goodness, bar down and only just, but it will be the first point going for Ripley Raptors. I thought V-Hill was actually going to save this on accident because look at oh, how he puts yeah. himself in that position. Yeah. If that ball, when it came down, it would have hit him and probably could have found its way out of the net instead. But it's going to be in favor of V-Hill. He's going to score first here for the Raptors. And this oh, is a kickoff goal back. in favor of the Saints. Ghosty going to score this one. Only took seconds for the game to even back out again as Ghosty comes through with a powerful shot off kickoff. That's a fantastic cheat-up. Yeah, and Inmore is in, uh, I, I believe he's in chat. He could be listening to us as well. He could have heard us say... You know, earlier cursing. on, I think in game number one, <laughs> no, not cursing necessarily, but remember back in game number one, we were like, we, you don't need mm. that flick, just drive yeah, it in, exactly. like, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. So you, you could mm. have, like, you know, hit the nail on the head where he's trying to be more um, choosy as to when he's going to pick, when he's going to use those mechanics or not. It's a choosy man. Now, homeboy Jesus, bringing it to that backboard again. We are seeing some dominance again on the pitch from... Ripley Raptors, but they have to hold it. It keeps coming back now. MLC Saints, when they get the opportunity for these counterattacks, do look very, very threatening. They do. I mean, oh. the Saints the Saints look really good, and I told you this was going to be a coin flip as to who's going to win this matchup. So far, it's been the Raptors who have rose up and, you know, combated that coin, and they've been forcing it onto the heads side in their favor. Um, Super Nye at midfield now, trying to get something going, but not going to find its mark. But like you said before, the Saints, they showed flashes of brilliance that last game where they had the high octane uh, offense, but they just only let the game get in favor of the Raptors. Oh, As you see, Crypto going to go ahead and drill my point home. Well, it could be exactly the same for the Saints here, just slowly going in favor of the Saints right now. They are coming in strong. One goal lead is no safety margin, though, and they will have to hold on to this. Yeah, thinking back to the last matchup where one goal was not enough to push past them, and you no. saw two unanswered goals in favor of the Raptors. Maybe right here is the equalizer. Oh. Another shot coming through. Homeboy, she's just going to miss. Another <laughs> oh shot. B Hill Devil is going to be denied by Ghosty. Oh, crypto. Oh, my goodness. Here comes the counterattack now, though, for the Saints. It's going to be slowed down dramatically for the defense of the Raptors to catch up to it. Onslaught of attack from Ripley Raptors, and now they're left with nothing to show for it. That can affect your mental. They have to get back into this quickly. Now back on their own side, will be trying to pick that confidence back up out of uh, the gutter it was left in with the ball as it got uh, swept away by MLC Saints on their defense. I want to remind everybody that the uh, Raptors are on match point, so yeah, I mean, this could have... Mm be a factor as to why the Saints are being so much more aggressive this game because it's do or die time situation right now. Oh, the reset. Oh, homeboy Jesus. I thought he was going to do it. Didn't have the scoop. Very, very close. Now coming back into the midfield again. Homeboy is going to put that up high for Invor. Big beat. Double tap incoming and it goes to the backboard. A shot from V Hill. It's going to go straight to the defender. Minute, 45 seconds left. Invor up in the air, off the back wall. Can somebody else score this one? Oh boy, Jesus was the closest person. Oh. What a save from V-Hill Devils. He's going to keep this one out. Another shot coming through. Ghosty not going to find its mark. The defense from the Raptors standing so tall right now in a clutch situation. 
You know, I just realized you should be really happy in this matchup simply because Ridley Raptors are on the orange side of the field and yep. Invor is still using the orange skin. That's yeah, the, yeah, he, yeah, he's using that bronze. <laughs> it was throwing me off when he, we were playing the other matchup. It really was. Invor with the doink, maybe? No, Homeboy Jesus still for the contest. Crypto stuck underneath, must have no boost. Bumps into the shots, and he gets a double on it as well. That is an incredible own goal. And one of the most unfortunate <laughs> things I have ever seen. <laughs> that is so unfortunate. Zero Cri boost, he had nothing. Crypto oh. was just that that good. He, he is him. He is him. Oh, he is him. <laughs> oh my goodness, that, that is, is brutal. Our crypto again with another chance to not only even here but now get in front for the Saints again. Super nice. Oh, it's just off, but the finish is there from crypto. And MRC Saints have it back. 50 seconds left. They just might be able to do this. Yeah, I, I believe they can as well. Uh, like I said, this isn't the right Raptors team. We said it was very situational as to what team was going to show up. Mm. I think that we can foresee uh, an overtime. We can see that, but are they going to win this game? Are they going to do it in a three to zero fashion? I don't. I don't know, Gex. I don't think it's going to happen because the Saints, like you said, they're they're starting to heat up at the right moments. And there, oh, Invor nearly snipes out that pass, but Crypto downfield. If he gets one here, they will be secured, I think. And V Hill now desperate to not let that happen. Final thirty seconds. Invor. Waterfall. Invor. Oh, oh my why? 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 Ghost is there. <laughs> oh, why? I mean, there Dex. was so much time on this. You've got to assume somebody's there, right? Ghosty was coming in, but there was some distance. I don't, uh, more of a question to me is where the MRC Saints were. I mean, it shouldn't have come down to that touch being a, a bad choice. It, that should have been the right choice because someone should have been there for the yeah. shot. Yeah, I guess you're right about that one. I'll, I'll give you that one for sure, but at the same time, uh, the way it looked, it would just look like Inbor had yeah. no right touch in that ball. But yeah, thinking back, I 100% agree with you. But 10 seconds remaining, 4-2. to two. Looks like the Saints are going to survive and force a game at number 4. Can they that get one? the reverse sweep? Like I said, I don't know. It depends on what team's going to show up. Right there, the Saints yeah. definitely looked a lot better than the Raptors in that situation. Um, but the, the, the Raptors still, in my opinion, have a lot more to give out here on the pitch. Invol going for a car change by the looks of it as well. So we'll see him he coming us. back in different. <laughs> he heard us. He heard us. Uh, MRC Saints, though, I mean, I think it's, I think you're absolutely right. It's about which teams show up in the next game. And when you're questioning that, I don't think the consistency is there for a re reverse sweep or a sweep. You should always have that interruption there somewhere. And I think that we are going to see it. And I think we probably will see it this game. Seeing it back to back from the Saints when now Ripley Raptors are kind of awakened from their slumber. Uh, I don't know. I think it might be Homeboy Jesus risen now and uh, coming back for it. Yeah, I mean, they could have been, you know, slacking off just a tad bit because they were winning in the series. They know they had a couple games to give, but, you know, that's not the, the correct time that you want to slack off, especially if it comes down to game differentials, like how we've been seeing on the stats uh, lately, how it does come down to the game differentials. This game could come back to bite you in the butt. You should have just came out here, finished the game off, you know, played the best Rocket League possible, and then, and then basically just close this one out, call it a day. But yeah. instead, we see ourselves in a Game 4 situation. The Saints now trying to pull off the reverse sweep. Can it happen? I don't know. Crypto down to ground. It's going to be contest put onto it immediately. This is danger for the Saints. Crypto does get the clear away. Imbor is there. Going to go high. Looks for the backboard. A reset maybe collected? No. As he runs low on boost, it does come back to ground, and the clear is found. An open net opportunity, Invor filling in in the last dying moments of that play. Invor did change his paint job, so you know I think he's rocking the uh, the Grand <laughs> Champ one now. He's not rocking the bronze one anymore. We're going to see if he can have a double touch with it. <laughs> it's still red. Not, I was going to say, not going to find its mark with it. So, um, But yeah, I mean, it, 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 at least it's not bronze or orange yeah. on the blue team I, well so. he, i thought he might go and put on the platinum one just so that he's blue on the orange team yeah i mean the diamond <laughs> one the diamond one or something as well diamond yeah yeah just to, just to spite us you know we're, we, we know you're listening okay in more <laughs> yeah homeboy jesus up to the backboard again ghosty out 
Ghosty and Crypto have been kind of the striking pair here for MRC Saints. And every yeah. time I see the link up, Invor! What? My goodness, shut my mouth! I'm talking about the wrong team. Invor is striking a 122k an hour spike from the ceiling. He looks like he's in free play out here. That was just <laughs> totally calculated. I don't understand how he got that read on it. He was just cheating up off the sidewall at midfield and then somehow got that second touch with so much power. That is an unbelievable goal as a statement that they are not losing game number four. The uh, car change, I thought we might see a different car body, but no, he's just, no, this is it. It's done. No, Super but, nine. No, up he, off wall. He, he went into his garage and just hit a couple, like, right, 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 real quick. And he was like, all right, this <laughs> one looks good. Yeah, yeah. Invor, good flick over one to the backboard. He's switched from the bronze mode to the GC mode, and you <laughs> see it come out straight away. Definitely a pl sleep placebo effect, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, still, irregardless. Uh, oh my gosh. Regardless of the fact, <laughs> uh, the, the, Raptors are, the, the Raptors are in good position, though, Gax. I mean, they, they scored this first goal. Like you said, they're not going down without a fight. Oh, they no, want to get Jesus. this one done as well. But at the same time, they have to combat against the Saints, who, who, like you said, we have to watch out for Ghosty. We have to watch out for Crypto. Crypto has been so dangerous and so deadly uh, for the offense here that, you know, they really haven't had many chances this ball game. But at the same time, like, thinking back to the last game and a couple games beforehand, Crypto has been very, oh. very prominent. Crypto again off that backboard, looking for Ghosty on ground. Tried for the pinch. Crypto goes in, but no, they will not find the touch. And everybody upfield for this passing play. Homeboy Jesus comes out for the redirect, doesn't quite find it, does get an important demo there, keeping Ghosty off the ball and keeping the attack alive. As V Hill can't quite find the touch, it will be Homeboy Jesus again for the double touch. It will just go high of the goal. Oh! Ridiculous. Invor. Trying to control the pace of the game, trying to control the, the, the what's going to happen as well with the ball. He's doing a good job at doing that as well. Just combated two members of the defense. Maybe if he went for that third player, the bump on that last player, he could have opened up the door wide open there for Homeboy Jesus. Now a little bit of a situation right now is going to be oh. the Raptors as Invor is going to save that one away and keep them up 1-0. Zero boost, the flip will go under the ball there. And boy, Jesus sends it to the backboard again. Crypto underneath, collect. Now, they have to keep this one point lead alive if they want to take the series here. And now, MRC Saints have just started a road to what could be a reverse sweep if they play out of their minds here, but they need better than this. Invor, the shot goes high. V Hill late on the follow up. And. Ripley Raptors continue their lead of one. He's keeping the ball away from the offense. V-Hill. Oh, maybe not. I was going to say, that's all that's really been happening so far. They got this one mm. goal lead, and this, they've been playing keep away this whole entire oh, time. This one's going to find its mark for sure. V-Hill Devil is going to add his name to the offensive stat sheet here for the Raptors. But a good take right here from V-Hill. And he does it by fixing the mistake he'd made on the last few attempts. The speed was there. V Hill was up the moment that popped out center. The strike was good and it was on target. That was all that was needed. And it had been for the last couple of attempts as well. V Hill just hesitating too much on those, fixes the issue and scores immediately. And right back to the offense we go as well for the Raptors. Two to zero in their favor, 30 seconds left. Barring anything crazy happens. They should have this one in the bag, but we do see offense right now for the Saints. Crypto going to be up in the air. Pops that one backwards towards Super Nye. A little bit of a miscommunication right there. V Hill Double still has the advancement, though. Going to pop that one towards center. Ghosty going to keep that one out. Homeboy Jesus oh, with a, a floater. What a save, though, from Crypto. Last chance right now. Inbor going to take that one away towards mid. This Pass one's floating. <laughs> Homeboy Jesus with another backflip. He says, no, I'm okay. We scored enough. We're not gonna... We won the game. Two to zero. Yeah. GG's. <laughs> We're not going to make you suffer through another kickoff just for us to be dominant here. It's already a two to zero. We have shut out the MRC Saints in the final game. We look good for it. And, man, they did. They deserved that win without a doubt. Played it out.
exceptionally. And MRC Saints, they've got a lot of promise behind them. They need to get back onto that ball quicker and just keep out of their defense. Keep the defensive line pushed up a little more than their goal line. Yeah, I agree. They, they allow too many teams, or at least the Raptors here in this in this state, just kind of push up and control the pace of play, control what's going to happen with the game. Mm -hmm. Thinking back, look at what Invor was doing. He, he knew exactly what he was doing, stalling time and just yep. kind of baiting those players up towards him. Like, come on, come challenge me, come take this ball away. And he knew where to put it to kind of keep it away from them. So, you know, GG's to the Raptors, GG's to the Saints. But at the same time, somebody has GG's to be the victor. To us. GG's to us, why? That was our last series. I don't want it to end, okay. Gex. What do you mean? I want to be here forever casting with you. I know. This we'll have straight... to wait for another day, though, whoops, because this is an ongoing tournament. It's going to keep going. No, this is like straight purgatory, just being here with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I love you, man. You know I do. Okay. I have much love for you guys. But, yeah, that's going to be it for us, Gex. You're 100% right with mm. that one. But we're going to take a look at some things real quick. We're going to go ahead and talk about the, the day schedule that we had here on the stream. Of course, re-wrapping up what happened today, we had the, uh, <laughs> let me get my sheet out, I'm sorry. Kendron, the number one seed at the time, taking on SPCC Light and Tangy, and they won that matchup 3-0. to zero. Of course, hopping over to Kendron versus that Linwood, in my personal opinion, the best match of the stream, taking mm. all five best of fives um, and two overtimes in that matchup as well. Linwood won that one 3-2, to two. hopping over to the Ripley Raptors versus the Toners. Close game. Um, I think the only game that was kind of different between that one was uh, the four to one stat line in game number one. But other yeah, than that, it was one. two to one, two to one. Toners win that one three to zero to secure that first. It was just consistent. It was yeah. a very good display by them. But like you said, it was very close. Yeah, very, very close. Like I said, even the, the, the first game, like we were talking in the green room, if you take away those two kickoff goals that they had, all three yeah. games would have been two to one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, wrapping it up towards the tail end of this one, you guys just watched the MRC Saints taking on the Raptors. Of course, the Raptors winning that one in a 3-1 to one fashion. And the games off stream that we've seen, uh, of course, were a couple of games. Um, we saw the Toners winning that one 3-0 to zero over the uh, SPCC Light and Tangy. And then we saw Linwood versus MRC Saints. They won that one 3-0 to zero as well. So what does this mean to you guys? We're going to talk about the standings now. The Div 1 standings on the screen. Toner is currently in first place with that six-game well, differential being mm. very, very perfect today in a 3-0 to zero fashion with both of their wins in a 2-0 stat line. Gex, what about Linwood, though? I mean, they did ta have two games taken off them, but I feel like their competition was tougher as well, Linwood. Uh, they they had to go against some teams that showed some real promise, but they're coming up uh, kind of an equal first here if you're looking at just the series, but that game differential is what matters. Two less games uh, positive into the wins for Linwood means they are in that four and will take that second place out. And then Kedron follows them up because they went a very, very even day today and uh, really just keeping things under control for themselves, but not finding the lead they were probably hoping for. Yeah, I agree with you on that one as well. Uh, Linwood just looks so, so strong, though, like I said beforehand. And, you know, they like... I, I do agree with you. They had the tougher schedule today, so things might get changed up a little bit towards, you know, next week, especially could be changed up. But let's hop over to Div 2 real quick, talk about that. Uh, the Div 2 standings. We're going to have the YVG Watermelon Squad. I do remember that name. They're sitting at 2 0 currently right now on top of Division 2. PCS currently sitting 2 and 0 as well. Both of them in first place with the same. Um, 2 0 and game differential as well, Gex. JPC RL 1, 1 and 1. Then we have Aces RL 3 at the 1 and 1 spot in the fourth place spot as well. Unfortunately, didn't get to see these matches, but I do remember a couple of these names from the qualifiers as well. Um, really, really impressive is that Watermelon spot, though. Yeah, YVG Watermelon, I think every time YVG have turned up, I've been uh, cautious about those teams because they have some unbelievable power behind them as a squad. YVG just raises good players, apparently. It's good to see uh, Victoria on top as the only uh, one of the state in that Division 2 as well. And uh, considering how many Queensland uh, spots are out there, we've also seen uh, in that Division 1, we saw a big step up from uh, Western Australia as well there. So it's good to see all the states it's really playing a part in this. Well, last but certainly not least, let's take a look at the Division Three standings, rounding things out here. Trinity Esports, that team we were talking about that faced the Saints, 
um, ended up losing that matchup three to zero, but now they're currently in first place right now with a three to zero win line, eight game differential in their favor. JPC RL2, the sister team of that JPC RL1 squad, who's currently in Division Two, they're sitting at two and one in second place uh, for uh, in the three game differential, and then Ripley Raptors mm. Orange, the sister team as well, sitting at two and zero oh with a six game differential. This is uh, the best timeline here queensland topping the uh the boards on this one uh oh, yeah. my home state here yeah max is <laughs> as well he'll back me up on that one uh, <laughs> uh yeah no queensland are doing very dominantly on this one uh, trinity esports coming up i'm i'm keen to get into that at some point and uh and see exactly how they play because that is very dominant yeah i think max did mention something about to see the representation here for queensland is just awesome you know, a, a lot of teams, a lot of uh, high schools or whatever uh, coming out here and just representing, you know, the, 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 the Queensland crowd. Yeah, mm. That's all I can really say about that. But, of course, we know all this would not be possible, Gex, without what? Our sponsors. Let's give them a shout out one more time before we head off because we couldn't do it without our sponsors. Predator Gaming, the gaming PC partner who provide high-end gaming focused PC solutions in both laptop and desktop formats powered by Intel. Followed up by our monitors, AOC Monitors, the gaming monitor partner who provide best-in-class monitor solutions for gaming and all other needs. Then our lovely delicious noodles, Indomie, the noodle partner yum, yum, yum. made with high quality flour and selected ingredients and spices. A plate of Indomie Mee Goreng will certainly brighten up your day. Try any one of the flavors available today from your local grocer or at indomie.com.au. I can verify if you are from Indonesia, you eat this stuff constantly. So this is very legit. <laughs> have you tried it before? Because I, have, I think yeah, uh, many, many times. This is, these yeah, are some of Max my actual me, favorite noodles. I said, when I come like, over, when I, oh. when I come over, you guys have to make me a meal and I, I have to try this stuff. You know what I mean? So hundred well, percent. It just fills anything. You chuck any kind of lunch meat, whatever you got left over, chuck it in with this once you've cooked it and it's full meal is good stuff it's probably like equivalent to like ramen or something like you know yeah, like you throw much. like a nice yep. nice egg in there as well yes you know? yeah absolutely i did that last time actually but we've got one more shout out to make and it's number five here game on cancer the charity of choice for the ael who fund much needed cancer research projects with the ael donating a portion of all student participation fees to this life-saving cause if you'd like to donate as well please head to the AEL's Tiltify campaign page. Give them the heart, guys. Yeah, thank you, Gax, for all those sponsors. Thank you to the sponsors as well. We appreciate it, because like I said, this would not be possible without you guys being here, supporting the RL scene here in Oceana. We appreciate you guys so very, very much. But before we go, let's take a look real quick at next week and what you guys have to look forward to over... We're going to have a lot of good matchups, a lot of good matchups that I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm going to be there, Gex. I, I think it's, you're not going to be there. I think we're going to have uh, uh, Max is going to come back next week. But we're going to have um, Kendron. Uh, I keep on saying Kendron. Kedron is going to be taking <laughs> on um, the Toners team, which is going to be a really, that's really good matchup. Be massive. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be a solid, solid matchup. And of course, we're going to have in that second spot for the game number two, we're going to have Linwood versus that Raptor squad, who's going to be, it's going to be a good matchup to watch too. But at the same time, I think it's going to lean a little bit towards uh, Linwood as they had that dominating performance this week. But anything can happen. You know, like mm. I said, the Raptors can, can come out firing mm. at all cylinders. You know, yeah. we're not sure where Raptors yeah. team is going to be. I, I think we, the, it really could be anything when it's the Raptors on field because they've got so much potential behind them. That they've got such high peak level performance. It's just getting the uh, the hero mode under control, using the rest of the team and uh, playing consistently. And then we're going to see some interesting stuff. Also, shout out to Inboard just to keep myself safe in the ranked queues. I know he's going to hunt me if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, uh, the, uh, the the game number three is going to be the Raptors Blue Squad taking on Kendron as well. And then rounding everything out is SPCC taking on the MRC Saints, which should be a pretty decent game as well towards the tail end of, uh, you know, towards the tail end of the stream. So pretty much anybody's ball game, in my personal opinion. There's a lot of good matchups, a lot of good head-to-heads, and I think that's really where we're going to start to see a lot of those standings really start to kind of, you know, Everybody starts to kind of separate from the pack, essentially, is what I'm trying to yeah. say. X. Well, still early days, isn't it? And uh, to see so many 
games on the same amount of series wins right now. Uh, everybody's kind of just separated into three groups, and those groups will play each other off, and uh, we'll see that separation, like you said. Uh, I I do think that honestly, I still think even with the uh, with the cleaner run uh, because of an easier run, Toners looked the best to me today. Just the most consistent peak performance probably goes to Linwood, and then maybe even Ripley Raptors to me. Uh, but Kedron. They've got some really interesting stuff happening on that side as well with consistency. So the, there's a big fight back from any of those top four right now, I think. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're if you're a part of anybody here that we casted today, we, me and Gex gave some really, really good advice. Uh, go, go back, back and watch, watch the film. Mm. Study the film. Study what you guys have. Save the replays. Go back through. Watch the defense. Watch the offense. You know, just break it down if you guys don't have a coach then i mean uh, i'm sorry but you know do the best that you guys could possibly can by you know just watching the film and learning from it and learning from your mistakes we, too we want it, you to be experts on the film though not critiques of the film i don't want to hear it don't don't come exactly. to me no. <laughs> Gex's DMs are wide open please go oh, to him Gex's no, DMs are wide open you can find him on metafy please <laughs> <laughs> no but i think that's going to do it here for us uh, i think we appreciate you guys so very very much for being here with us thank you seriously without this we, we would not be doing this without you guys here in the chat we do read the chat we do love you guys being here thank you guys very very much gex any final words final thoughts anything else happening i mean i just mentioned uh you know cr critiquing the show so a big shout out to the guys who made this possible as well all their stuff in the background yep. our admins our broadcaster everybody who works so hard here to make uh such a brilliant show ael themselves uh rlo for uh, doing the the broadcast side of things it's been awesome to be back out for the ael stuff i've missed it uh substantially so yeah nice to uh nice to be back on them particularly with you whoops uh good to have you in the region Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate you so very much for the opportunity as well. I love being over here in Oceania. Like I said, seeing the up and comers in the scene gives me a leg up on that competition. You know, I could be like, oh, I seen that guy before. He was playing in the high school. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love to see it. But we thank you guys very, very much. I'll see you guys next week for week three action here in the AEL High School Cup. This has been week two for the Mayhem tournaments. Hope you guys have a good night. We appreciate you guys so very much.
Thank you.